listening to Here to Chew Bubblegum, recorded from a secret location in the city that moves mountains. Greetings. We come in peace. And it is here. It is here. Episode 27 of Here to Chew Bubblegum. How have we not killed each other in 27 episodes? I have tolerated you. It's called medication, my friend. (laughs) Yeah. They've had to up mine a few times. (laughs) How's your week been? Uh, So far... Knock on wood, it's been pretty decent. Okay, we're good, good. I hope it stays uh, pretty decent for you. Uh, last two shows have been really, really good. I think so. Don't forget, uh, coming up, I guess maybe um, next week, uh, we'll let Elliot tell you what his special news is. Big news from Elliot. 3062. He's not a time traveler. He is. No, he's not. Uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently with this show. Uh, we're not going to have any listener email. Any listener text, no question of the week again, because this is our Ingersoll Lockwood special. Ooh. Now, we first heard about Ingersoll Lockwood what, back last November is mm-hmm. when we started. Yes. And we've had a couple of episodes uh, donated, uh, not donated. Dedicated. Dedicated. Yes. To that subject. And uh, in this episode, we're going to go back and play all the clips where we have mentioned or we have researched or did stories on Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated. It's exciting news. Let's get started. All right. All right. The first clip, uh, the first time we ever talked about Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated. Now, are you going to do the um, the roundtable one where we kind of we had the epiphany that? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, oh, boy. yeah. That's yeah. my favorite. Yeah, that that will be here as well. That will be here as well. Episode number nine, recorded December 27th, 2020. And welcome back. How are we doing today, Goose? I am doing good. I've enjoyed the show so far. I always love uh, doing the show with you, and now I love doing the show with you and Ned. You know, it's it's uh, it's getting more enjoyable. What do you mean getting more enjoyable? Uh, well, like I mean, we're getting... You said you've always enjoyed it. Well, I, I, sir, I, I definitely have, but what I'm saying is like we're starting to get into a... Uh, Kind of our, our own little groove here, and it's, right. it's becoming right. more um, more fun as the as each show goes more on. Fun. More okay. fun, more funner, funner. Okay, yeah, <laughs> you can you can say that word. That's Much fine. More funner. Well, good, good. All right. Um, so this is the second segment of the show. Tell us what is so top secret about this. All right. So um, this was actually brought to me, brought to our attention by uh, our producer, Ned. Right. Uh, who, You're talking about last week when we ended the show. He's like, hey, that's opened up a whole new. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's that's what I'm talking about. Um, also, he uh, Ned spends a lot of his time alone in dark rooms on that's the, on very the inter- sad. On the internet. So That's very sad. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming in between... Activities. Uh huh. He's researching. Got you. Got you. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Love you, Ned. Um. Anyway, so have you heard of the uh, the conspiracy that uh, Donald Trump his family are time travelers? <clears throat> I honestly, um, I hadn't heard this till last week. Um, I think I sent you and Ned a thing from a message board that I read. I, I had heard that Donald Trump was, but not his family. So, you're going to explain to us uh, why Donald Trump's family could be a time traveler, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, and here is what, here's what I've been able to dig up. Okay. Uh, and Ned, if, you, if I'm missing anything, please feel free to jump in because... This you were the one who has actually brought this to our attention, so you've done a lot more research on it than than I have. Um, you know, I've been able to find quite a bit about right, it, but right. Ned knows this subject intimately. So, uh, in today's skeptic world, a new conspiracy has arrived: the theory that Donald J. Trump and his family have time traveled from a distant time in our current history, with intentions of ruling over our beloved country. This crazy yet horrifying discovery is backed up by a strange set of coincidence and conjecture. This all started uh, when, when someone came across some books right. uh, on the Office of Library, Congress, Library of Congress's uh, website. Uh, the books are called Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey and 1900 or The Last President. Now, I, I have heard of those books. I am familiar with those. Okay. 
Well, the the they were all written in um, the late 1800s, right? Uh, by ink by a right author named Ingersoll uh, Lockwood. Mm-hmm. He was also an attorney. Also an attorney. Okay. Uh, the books themselves are real, so you can look them up for you. For yourself, but that's not what the point is. Okay. The point is the plot of the first book is about Baron Trump. Uh, includes the story about a young boy who finds a secret portal and time travels. Uh, Dan Evan of Snopes.com uh, gives a great in-depth description of the eerie connection. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What was the what was the name of that uh, that website? Snopes.com. Snopes.com. Okay. You want to take a second try at that? No. I saw the same word before, and I think I've pronounced it snoops.com. Mm. Either way, it starts okay. with an S and an N. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm so, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, you're fine, you're fine. All right, there are some incredible connections to be made in the first family of the United States and Lockwood's novels from the turn of the 19th century. For starters, the main character's name is the same as President Donald Trump's son. Right. Uh, Baron. Even though it's spelled a little differently... Uh, Trump's adventures began or begin in Russia, and are guided uh, thanks to the directions provided by the master of all masters, a man named. Can you guess his name? Don. 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 Yeah. The Don. Before leaving for his uh, voyage through the unknown, Trump is told. Uh, uh, Trump is told of his family's motto: "The pathway to glory is strewn with pitfalls and danger." Hmm. Uh, so Lockwood wrote a sequel. Um, of his first book, and in his third novel, it was called uh, 1900, or The Last President. Right. Things link eerily to present day. The story begins with a scene from a panicked New York City in early November. Uh, it describes a state of uproar after an election in which an, an enormously opposed outsider is granted power. An outsider candidate. Does that hmm. sound familiar? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so after the chaotic scene in New York City, we find out the man who won the presidency is extremely wealthy and resides on Fifth Avenue. In case you didn't know, Trump Tower resides on Fifth Avenue. Okay. Uh, so as crazy as that sounds, once Lockwood's character becomes president, he began choosing people for his cabinet. One of the first people he picked was a man named, uh, I don't know how to say his first name, Lafay or Leif. 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 You know what his last name is? What? Pence. Really? Right here in black and white. Wow. Right? Well, see, I had no clue. This All this was in there. Yep. Lafay Pence. Yep. Uh, if you're interested in this theory, then I suggest looking it up. There's much more on this topic to uncover. Um, now, I'm, I'm, I'm already hooked. That's That's got me drawn it's, in. Like I said, there's a lot... A lot on this subject, and I don't think that we're going to be able to cover it all in this episode. Okay, we can make so, it two parts. And I and I want I want our uh, I want our listeners if they are familiar with this story, I you know please write in, tell me some stuff that I've missed or, or you know theories of your own on this. Um, so this conspiracy is an idea of time travel and how it may or may not relate to Nikola Tesla. Well, how does Nikola Tesla fit okay. in all this, right? Correct. Uh, I believe that Tesla was a time traveler who came from the future uh, of a time period in which he lived. I theorize also that he has side effects that were caused by a huge jump in space time while his um, white flashes. Have right. You, have you heard of that? Yes, I have heard of that. Uh, so he said he would have white flashes and before a sudden thought of inventions came to his brain. Also, real quick, I want to just jump in because last week I think I said he jumped out a window or was fell dead. Mm-hmm. He was actually found dead. The guy that jumped out a window was a guy named Frank Olson. He was an inventor that was involved in Project MK Ultra. Okay. I, I got the two mixed up. I just went to. So now, fill me in some more. I, I am a huge fan of uh, Nikola Tesla. For sure. So how does he play in to well, this? <clears throat> so just just bear with me. It's okay. This is this is this is a rabbit hole for sure. Okay. So we're going down it. We're in it. We're on it. We're doing it. All so right. Let's go. Uh, did you know that Nikola Tesla uh, was considered, at the time, to be loony? Yes. All yes, right. I did. And it was because he believed that aliens existed, and through terminal radio t- stations or giant satellites on Earth, we could communicate with the outer space uh, long before it became normality. Uh, he also created multiple inventions that benefit us in today's world directly from his brain without any blueprints or sketches. He simply just knew. He attributed this to his white flashes. 
Uh, he knew that wireless transmission of power was possible and impulsively built a giant tower in his backyard in efforts to create <coughs> worldwide uh, wireless transmission. And we have that today. And we have that today. Many scientists today still believe that he was uh, correct, and th uh, correct and attempt to follow in his footsteps. They believe discovered, uh, they have discovered that he was in fact right. However, they also discovered that the only way for his, for a Tesla coil to function properly uh, in the in the ideas of like a, a worldwide wireless transmission right. uh, was for it to be made into a giant tower, which somehow Tesla had already known, but only because of a white flash and a good memory. He built one in his backyard. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, this man even told everyone that he knew uh, the people in the world would pollute the air, causing what we consider global warming and completely use up our renewable resources. Therefore, he went on a mission and attempts to create another way and develop renewable energy. He did not want us to run out because he feared it terribly. He created induction motors, hydroelectric power plants, telephone voice amplifiers, and over 275 different patents in 26 different countries. Uh, Tesla had claimed that what we call a death ray is a possible invention as well as... Um, as well, and that he had already created one. Uh, he said he invented the machine that ran on cosmic radiation. Now, Tesla was a genius. I mean, there's there, there's no, I mean, you know, people can say that he is loony, he was crazy, mm -hmm. but he, he is a genius. Absolutely. So, how does Nikola Tesla fit into this theory? I don't know if that's what I asked you a few minutes ago. <clears throat> I'm still waiting on that answer. Just giving you some Okay, sorry, here sorry. Here we go. All right. So he was found dead in January of 43 in his hotel in New York City after being hit by a car. Right. All right. So. Um, now, what, what, what year was it again? 1943. Okay. Supposedly he invented the time machine. Right. And, and that's, that's where I'm getting to. Well, so he supposedly invented the time machine, right? But it was, um, it was like in the lost files, supposedly, right? Okay. That, that's what I thought I read. Where, um so he died in 1943 in his hotel in New York City, and representatives of the U.S. government Office of Alien Property right. seized many documents relating to the brilliant and, pr and prolific 86-year-old inventor's work. It was at the height of World War II, and Tesla claimed to have invented a powerful particle beam weapon. The death right. ray. The death ray. Right. Uh, so what happened to Tesla's files from there? I do know that the government took them. I don't know more than that. Okay. Uh, so the FBI finally declassified some 250 pages of Tesla-related documents under the Freedom of Information Act in 2016. Uh, they followed up by two more releases. The most recent was in March of 18. Okay. Um, Before you read those, why would somebody classify documents of an 86-year-old supposedly loony madman for? They wouldn't unless there was something valid there. Right. I, I totally agree. Okay. Now, of course, they, they say, or the government says that it's because it was the height of the war. Uh, they were afraid that his information would fall into enemy hands, blah, blah, blah. But if you're well, talking about a loony 86-year-old man at the time right. who um, is talking about particle beam weapons and wireless transmissions in a time where we're still... Right. We didn't even have a jet engine exactly, at that time. Exactly. Uh, so... From there, uh, they kind of released some files, but some of the some of the Tesla files are still missing. Three weeks after the Serbian American inventor's death, an electrical engineer from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, was tasked with evaluating his papers to determine if they contained any ideas, ideas of significant value. I see. Here's the other thing. So, <clears throat> supposedly, it says, um, according to the declassified files, Doctor, are you ready for this one? Okay, Doctor. John G. Trump. Really? Yes. Okay, now who is John G. Trump? So John Trump was the was the uncle of the 45th U.S. President, Donald J. His Trump. His uncle? His uncle. Okay. That's his uncle. Uh, in, in fact, uh, Donald Trump, the president, was actually quoted uh, in an interview once. My uncle used to tell me about nuclear before nuclear was nuclear. Hmm. So that's, I mean, obviously he's a brilliant man. Right. Um, <clears throat> so... John G. Trump tells, uh, pretty much says prim uh, that uh, Tesla's efforts to be primarily of a speculative, philosophical, philosophical, and promotional character. He said the papers did not include new sound 
workable principles or methods for realizing such results. So basically he's saying everything that's in this old man's hotel room is garbage. It's garbage. Yes. But yet they declassified some 250 documents. I wonder how much is classified still to this day. Uh, that's a good question. I didn't find, I didn't come across it. Okay. That. But. Ned raised his hand. So fun facts, when they, when the government found Nikola Tesla dead, they supposedly kept his DNA. Okay. Sure. So they kept so, his DNA for what? Cloning or? They cloning kept and Tesla's DNA. Yeah, they kept his DNA. For cloning. For cloning. And supposedly in 1970, they cloned him. And someone was born in 71. That is, according to a conspiracy theory, right. is the clone of Nikola Tesla. I'll let you get to that because he owns a very popular company. Okay. Called, you know, all right. Yeah, I'm gonna, all right. I'll visit that here in a second. But, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I wasn't sure if I was going to bring that into this or not. Uh, because that itself is just a completely different uh, wild theory. Yeah. Uh, so getting back to this, uh, the FBI pointed to, to Dr. Trump's report as evidence that Tesla's vaunted death ray particle beam didn't exist. Uh, but the U.S. government was, in itself was split. Um Mark Seifer is the author of a bi biography, Wizard, the Life and Times of Nikola Tesla, says a group of military personnel at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton. See, there's that base right, again. Right. That base has been in everything. Oh, yes, I mean, yes. Numerous accounts, stories, conspiracies. Yes. Uh, he's including Brigadier General L.C. Uh, Craigie, um, who had a very different opinion of Tesla's ideas. Craigie was the first person to ever fly a jet for the military. Okay. So he's pretty much like the John Glenn of the day. So gotcha. he's he's got a somewhat of a pretty a robust follow. You know, right. A, 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 a legion of fans. Yes, that's it. Uh, he said there's something to this. The particle beam weapon is real. All right. So moving from the particle beam weapon, uh, we're, we're getting to that. You know, everybody's okay. doing whatever. Now, so oh, go ahead. Before you move on, I mean, I'm just thinking about. Donald Trump's uncle, John Trump, finding this information. He spent, what, three days mm -hmm. just looking it over? Yes. Okay. Now, if there was 200 and some files that they declassified recently, mm -hmm. a few years ago, he must be like a speed reader to go through that much information. Yeah, that's exactly My right. gut is telling me that there was something there and that he did not turn it all in. Well, and here's... Or he <clears throat> did and something happened after. Now, here is uh, here is something that's going to kind of blow your mind. Okay. So then there's this nagging question of what happened to the missing files. So when Tesla died, his estate was go to, was supposed to go to his nephew, uh, Sava, Sava Kozinovic. Okay. Uh, who was the Yugoslavian ambassador for the U.S. at the time. Okay. Um, some of the FBI feared that Kozinovic was trying to rest control of Tesla's technology in order to make such information available to the enemy. So, of course, they're using that. Right. That smoke screen, right. you know, this is going to fall into enemy hands and whatever. So in 52, the U.S. court decided that, you know, hey, it is his rightful property, return all the stuff. So uh, Tesla's files were, were returned to him. So when when they originally took all of the information, right, they packed everything of Nikola Tesla's into 80 trunks. 80 trunks? 80 trunks. Worth of stuff. Worth of stuff. Wow. Do you know how many trunks arrived in Belgrade to his nephew? Eight. Six. There are 60. I'm sorry. 60. Yes. So you've so got 20. There's 20 trunks that are missing. That are missing. That's a lot of paper. Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Um, so <clears throat> the, the, the theory is that okay. there is a time machine, a workable time machine theory in those papers, and okay. that it has been used, um, and that um, John G. Trump, Built the time machine. Built the time machine. I yes. mean, he was basically like a treasure hunter and just yeah. stumbled upon this. Absolutely. <clears throat> which uh, which makes me think, I mean, yeah, to look at these papers and to dissect and actually make a time machine is pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, he was a smart guy because mm -hmm. he knew what he was looking at. Yes. But it's kind of sad also that Nikola Tesla didn't get to make that time machine. That's exactly true. Yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. So, th th this this story is just dripping with conspiracy, and I'm trying to paraphrase it as best as I right. can. But just to kind of get through everything, so we're talking, we're still talking about Nikola Tesla here, correct? 
So, <clears throat> despite uh, John G. Trump's de- uh, dismissive assessment of Tesla's ideas immediately after his death, uh, the military did try and incorporate particle beam weapon- uh, weaponry for decades. Uh, notably, the inspiration of the death ray fueled Ronald Reagan's strategic defense initiative. Star Wars. Or Star Wars program in the 80s. Um, interestingly, just days before his death, um, FDR, mm-hmm. the president, the right. uh, may have sought a meeting with the inventor, with Nikola Tesla. So, just days before his death. Which could have been a very accidental death, or it could have been a murder. You know, right, who knows? right. Um, he's wrapped up in these, in in the, these government, uh, these government things, and the president is want to talk to him. You know, so um, although some of his more innovations or some of his more sensitive innovations may still be hidden, Tesla's legacy is still alive in both. And well, both in devices we use every day and technologies that will be undoubtedly play a role in our future. Tesla is the inventor of wireless technology. So, do you think it's possible that there was a time machine there? All right. Or, okay. or at least, at least now, a working. I theory. have not went down this rabbit hole before. I have searched some inventions in Nikola Tesla in the past. Uh, there was supposedly a cane. That or a stick or something, and I think it was called the Tesla cane or something like that. That supposedly, if you were in possession of this, you could time travel just just with this, you know. All right, now, and I have looked at some of his patents and stuff that you know are, are open to the public to look. I have looked up some of those. Mm-hmm. I think first, I think he's very smart, very brilliant, uh, way way uh, uh, ahead of his time. Um, I think it is possible. Which now that's that's also why why one theory was that Nikola Tesla himself is a time traveler or was him, was himself a time traveler. I don't really believe that because of the uh, legacy that he left in this area. You know, I mean, he 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 was virtually broke and penniless when sure. he passed away. Mm-hmm. And to me, if you're going to be a time traveler, you're going to you know not necessarily be rich or millionaire, but but you're not going to be broke and penniless. And you're going to have money to support and fund these projects and inventions that you want to make. Which brings me to my next two points. Donald Trump was a billionaire. Right. Donald Trump's family could be the time travelers. But also what Ned, what producer Ned brought up, you're going to be blown away by who I tell you the, the supposed clone is of Nikola Tesla. Okay. So wait, wait, wait. wait. There is a clone, supposedly, of Nikola Tesla, like Ned said, that was born in 1971. 1971. Okay. Um, now, what I'll do is I'll. Do you want to hear that part, or do you want me to go over the book first of, of the Baron it's, Trump? It's it's uh, entirely up to you. Let's talk about the book first, and then we'll okay. go to the, we'll go down that second rag. Okay. We'll All right. So we've talked about um, Trump possibly being a time traveler. Correct. Or Trump's family Correct. possibly being time travelers. Now we haven't really, and the biggest evidence that that started all this was the books um, that. Lockhart, or is it Lockhart? Yeah. Lockhart wrote, or Lockwood, I'm sorry, Lockwood, Lockwood. wrote. Uh, so the Baron Trump novels are two children's novels written in 1889 and 1893 by the American author and lawyer Ingersoll Lockwood. They remained obscure until 17 when, somebody, when they received media attention for the perceived similarities between their protagonist and the U.S. President Donald Trump. Now, is there any connection between a Trump family and this author of these books? Not that I'm aware of, okay. but I'm I'm still actively researching. This is this gotcha. is a, this has this this story has fascinated me, and I'm still actively researching. But there's so much to it that you, I mean, it takes it's going to take a while. You okay. know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. If if our, if our listeners want to reach out, if they know if they know a part of the story and they want to they want to uh, talk more about it, please reach out, talk to us about it. I would love to know more about it. Um, now, in the 19th century publication and reception, Lockwood published his first novels, The, the Travels, uh, Travels and Adventures of Little Baron Trump and His Wonderful Dog, Bulger, in 1889. And in its sequel, Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey, um, in 1893, uh, the, sounds, or the novel recounts um, the adventures of a German boy, Wilhelm Heinrich Sebastian von Trump, who goes by, the, who goes by Baron Trump. Now... 
Uh, he discovers weird underground civilizations, offends the natives, flees from his uh, entanglements with local women, <laughs> and repeats his pattern until arriving back home at Castle Trump. Okay. His hmm. home was called Castle Trump. Okay. Where does Donald Trump live? Trump Towers. Hmm. Pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that is... <clears throat> so in 2017, the books were rediscovered uh, by the internet for, uh, forum users, uh, the media who pointed out similarities between the protagonist and tr President Trump. Jamie Fuller wrote, up on, wrote in Politico that Baron Trump's and uh, is precocious, restless, and prone to get in trouble. He often mentions his massive brain and has personalized insults for most people he meets. Fuller also notes that Baron Trump lives in a building named after himself, Castle Trump, while the real-life Donald Trump had lived in Trump Tower for decades. Now, there's too many similarities for this guy to just to be, you know, because you had uh, Pence named, you had, you know, isn't, isn't Barron's mom, like, from Russia or somewhere like uh, that? I think she's uh, Yugoslavia, maybe, okay. or Bosnian, maybe. So. Uh, but, I mean, Close at, enough. The, at the time, yeah, I mean, the Soviet Union, I don't know how far it stretched, but it might right. have been, you know, right. it was possible. So going into this uh, DNA clone okay. that producer Ned brought up, um, who do you think it is? Jim Carrey. It is not Jim Carrey. Okay, because he's uh, he was born uh, seventy one. They would be a little bit older than me. So uh, Richard Bezos. No, actually, no. It's uh, Elon Musk, which is wild. Okay, when you think about what what this guy has done. Uh, all the companies that he's owned and, and put together. And, the, and he owns a car company named he owns a Tesla. Tesla. Exactly. Uh, and um, he is a multi, probably billionaire at this point, uh, with you know, making sure that he can do the things that he wanted to do. Right. If he is a clone of, of Nikola Tesla, that makes sense. He, Nikola Tesla died penniless, broke, whatever. Um this guy, Elon Musk, is now multi billionaire. Right. Pushing us into the you know, the, the wild frontier of outer space. Right. And how did he do that? Um if I'm not mistaken, he was the owner of PayPal or he created PayPal, yeah, didn't he? Yeah. Uh wasn't he a CEO of Uber for a while or something? Yes. I think he was. Uh Tesla Motor Company and now SpaceX. Uh and SpaceX by leaps and bounds are ahead of their their nearest competitor. Right now, I'm I'm going to do a little digging on this because I think this is very fascinating. It certainly is, uh, and that explains why Ned showed me a picture last week of Elon Musk and Nikola Tesla. Yep, and asked me, do they look similar? You know, now I, and I thought that was a little bit strange, but Ned's <laughs> a strange guy, and yes, they do look similar. You know, there's similarities there. There there are similarities. Uh, so that's the other part of the uh, is that so the other part of the theory is that the government faked his death fake Nikola Tesla's death, uh, swooped in, kidnapped Tesla, and kept him out of the public eye, uh, but had him uh, had him help us develop war weapons and advanced technology because he already believed it was he already believed in it before we did. Uh, Lastly, is believed that Tesla actually passed uh, that Tesla actually passed. They took a piece of his own DNA uh, in order to clone him, which is where it is said that Elon Musk may have gotten his intelligent, futuristic thoughts and scientific perception. Elon Musk is that is that clone. The person uh, he is derived from has uh, many similarities, uh, beliefs to his own. Um, thus, his usage of AC motors rather than DC, perhaps the... Uh, and th that was like something Nikola Tesla mm -hmm. preferred also. Yeah, absolutely. And perhaps the uh, inventions that Musk has created are possibly just the lost documents from Tesla's hotel room. Who, by the way, doesn't need the lost documents because they're already there. Right. Hmm. It'd be interesting to know if Elon Musk how he gets his ideas. Is is there a white flash? I'm I'm, there... I'm I'm going to do some digging on Elon Musk now. It's very it's very interesting. Have you done any research? Because I've not done any research on Elon oh, Musk. No, I've not done anything. Like I said, this is there. It is just dripping with conspiracy, and it's all connected, and it's all weird, and it's intriguing, and I love it. But I can't. It's there's just a lot to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of avenues definitely. to go down here. Uh, Ned, thank you for bringing that to our attention. This has been this has been some pretty good reading. What is your what what is your thoughts on it? I'm not really sure. Like, you know, the, rabbit, the rabbit hole doesn't end. Yeah, exactly. There's many avenues that just go everywhere. 
But I mean, you know, the one thing that done it for me, like you said, Pence, uh, right. Fifth Avenue, Trump Tower, Towers, yeah, just it's it's a very there's a lot of coincidences there. Well, I think that I'm gonna do a little bit of research on this. If you don't have anything set for next week for segment one or two, mm-hmm. let's pick back up with this discussion. Okay, let's you you take a subject or or an individual and do some research. Okay, Ned, you do the same. And I'll do the same. All right. And we'll have a continuing story to this next week. That's exciting. Uh, You know, if you don't mind, I would like to take uh, Elon Musk and the author that wrote the Baron Trump books. Okay. And I'll see what I can find out about them. That sounds good to me. And, uh, you know, you guys talk amongst yourselves. And, and we'll figure out Or which work ones we together. Do. And yeah. uh, I, would, I mean, that's that's very, very, very fascinating. It is. The, the, Great job on that, Ned. Great job. You know, there there is, uh, whether it actually has traction or not, there is a lot of substance there. That's well, just, it, there, there's it, definitely it, something up with the, with the Trump books. And if okay. nothing else, just to, just to probe your own imagination the, and make you, you know, you think. Know, the, and, I mean, you know, you look up uh, John Trump. Mm-hmm. See what okay. you know things he's invented. Yep, I'll, I'll uh, and we compare out. we can compare that to some of the things well, that Nikola Tesla talked about and see if they're. And what I'll do is I'll I'll look up John Trump before 1943 okay. and then after 1943 to see if there's. Oh, he anything. he probably came a, uh, he probably uh, became a huge success after 1943. So. This segment is from episode 10, which premiered January 3rd, 2021. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, Cronkite, as always, and the gentleman sitting next to me is Goose. Goose, how are you? I am good. Thank you very much, very much for that introduction. Well, you're very welcome. So it's time to get started and pick up where we left off last week. <sighs> I'm pumped. This is Ned's story. This is Ned's conspiracy. And it's actually turned out to be pretty daggone fascinating okay. now do you want me to start out <clears throat> because you ended last week with some people thinking that elon musk was uh nikola tesla cloned yeah why don't you start okay. out and see what you got and then i've got some stuff here as well okay well i will start out and there are more similarities between elon musk and nikola tesla than there are differences For starters, Elon Musk was born June 28, 1971, in South Africa. Okay. Uh, Nikola Tesla was born July 10, 1856. So they are both cancers. They share the same zodiac signs. Uh, Elon Musk's father was a South African electromechanical engineer, while Nikola Tesla was a mechanical engineer. Okay. So Nikola Tesla stood six two. How tall do you think Elon Musk is? Six two. He is also six two. Mm. There's differences in their weights. Uh, they do have a similar appearance. Mm-hmm. Um, Ned showed me a picture of both of them, and there are some similarities there. Uh, they both love to read. They both started their love for reading at a very a very uh, young age. Okay, uh, Elon Musk invented SpaceX and is exploring space. One of the many things that Nikola Tesla invented, uh, he invented something that he observed unusual signals from space. And he speculated that this was communication from another planet. He mentioned this in a letter to a reporter in December 1899 and to the Red Cross Society in, in December 1900. Reporters treated this as a sensational story and jumped to the conclusion that Tesla was hearing signals from Mars. He didn't say where he heard them from, but he liked to explore space too. And his way of thinking about space is that was the same as Elon Musk is today. Now, okay, uh, Elon Musk was born in South Africa, okay? And in the country of South Africa, they have top they they have five of the top genetic laboratories in the world that specialize some of them specialize in cloning some of them specialize in helping people you know that have a hard time that can't create natural that help uh, producing eggs and stuff like that mm. so he is born in a place not far uh, i can't i didn't write down the name of the lab 
but there's one about 10 miles from where he was born at. So there's a lot of similarities there. Now, I'm going to say a little bit more to the end, which is it's very possible he could be a clone. Mm. Or he could... I don't know if Nikola Tesla is still alive today. Okay. Uh, history, science would tell us, no, he probably probably not. But his death is, there's a big question mark there. And I'll talk about that after you uh, explain to us, you know, some of what you found. <clears throat> okay. So Now, what do you think about those similarities? There are a lot of sim. That's why I say there are a lot of similarities. It's just fascinating. Mm-hmm. But if if all of this is just coincidence, yes, that's a lot of coincidence. Oh yes, yes. I you know, know, it's very it's very hard to wrap your head around <clears throat> that two people from different parts of history <clears throat> have this many similarities and even look similar. Right. Very strange. You know, now their weight was about 70 pounds different. Uh, but Who's heavier? Uh, Elon Musk. But, you know, you have to look at the way times are now. Mm-hmm. They didn't have fast food back when they did when Nikola Tesla was around, you know. Well, and all the preservatives and herbicides yeah, and things yeah. like that. that we and use. Nikola Tesla had a very strict diet, and he ate at exactly 8, 10 p.m. every night until the day that he, his body was discovered in the New York hotel room. Hmm. Very strange. It's very, it gives me goosebumps. Um, so I was uh, kind of coming across an article here mm-hmm. um, that says, you know, it kind of asks how Tesla um, and Donald Trump are all connected. Right. Um, so just kind of like a recap on January 9th of 43, two days after Nikola Tesla had died, um, in his New York City hotel, the FBI called MIT professor and esteemed electrical engineer John G. Trump. Right. So we know that Trump and Tesla are already connected, linked, connected in this way. So the, the reason that he was called in was to basically determine if there were any of the belongings, you know, uh, that, that Tesla was working on were, uh, the government says, could fall into the wrong hands. Right. So they were just trying to figure out uh, you know, if he had invented anything of a weapon of mass destruction or, you know, the, the death ray that he was that he was uh, talking about. Uh, and after three days of investigation, Trump, in fact, um, determined there was no risk. Uh, it turned out Tesla never actually made his death ray, but still the mystery uh, and exaggerated claims, along with the soaring success and failures associated with Tesla, uh, continue to play, uh, be played out on a scale that only could have been imagined. Um, so now these two profile electric vehicle companies, one named after, or one named after the inventor's last name, Tesla, headed up by Elon Musk, uh, very much an intellectual descendant of the inventor. So this is an intellectual descendant. No, right. This is, he is him. It, so you, you are a hundred percent convinced he's a clown. After reading what I have read, yes. Uh-huh. I'm, I, okay. you know, I, I think it could be possible. I'm, I think I'm it's not very totally possible. convinced. Uh, I think it's very possible. Um, so, let's see. So, let's see. And then another one is uh, is the name Nikola after his first name. So, you have two electric car companies that are both named after his Nikola first name. Nikola Tesla. Exactly. Right. Um, so, both were created, are creating huge huge wave and headlines throughout uh, for very different reasons 80 years later. Uh, yet, those who believed in the man and his vision... Maybe this isn't too surprising. It's also the case that Tesla, brash and successful, and Nikola, speculatively in trouble, both ref- reflect facets of their own namesake. It's perhaps poetic that Tesla's Musk sometimes spars with and sometimes emulates Professor Trump's nephew, the President of the United States. So, what I'm gathering here is that. So, Tesla may have been offended. Right. Uh, by the fact that Trump's went in and took what took his took his stuff, mm-hmm. uh, and that's he was working for the government at the time. Right. That's not saying he went in and, and took the stuff. Okay. For his own well, gain. Let you me know. point something out here. Okay. okay. In uh, 1894, Tesla began investigating on what he referred to as 
radiant energy of invisible kinds after he noticed damaged film uh, in his laboratory that he'd done in previous experiments. Okay, this was later identified as uh, today's x-rays. Guess who got Trump, or I'm sorry, guess who got credit for inventing the x-ray? It wasn't Nikola Tesla it was John who Trump. made it by mistake. It was John Trump. Correct. Mm. So there's nothing in those trunks. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's strange. You know, obviously, um, Musk has been kind of button heads with Donald Trump. Right. And Tesla probably feels from beyond the grave or, or whatever now, you if, know, if he's... I've, I've never really picked up uh, until you said that just then why he would not like Donald Trump. But that makes sense now. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, just to throw this out there briefly, after uh, Nikola Tesla's nephew got some of the trunks back, mm -hmm. um, he died just a few years later. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yes. He died just a few years later after he got the trunks back and donated them. Mm. And uh, you want me to just go ahead and share what I was going to wait to the end? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Let's hear it. All right. Let I'm me go ahead and share this with you. Okay. Now, on Nikola Tesla's death, you know, um, his body was taken to a cemetery in New York where he had a death mask, death mask done, and he was uh, allegedly cremated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then that was shipped to, off to Budapest, and it's in the Nikola Tesla Museum. Uh, or uh, Bo uh, or uh, Bulgaria one, I can't remember. Now, let me, let me ask you a question, okay? Some deaths in history that we cannot argue that they actually happened, okay? JFK, mm -hmm. all right? I mean, that one happened. It was witnesses by, witnessed by millions of people. Uh, Saddam Hussein. Because we had leaked footage of him getting hung and, right. you know, even falling through the gallows. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, uh, Osama bin Laden. I put a big question mark by his. Yeah, there's... Because uh, he was what? Shot and dumped in the ocean. Yes. Okay, another one that I put a question mark by through history is Hitler. Because what happened to Hitler? Well, supposedly, he and he killed himself, and his body was found. And he was burned by the Russians. Right, but I have never believed that. Okay, I've never believed that either. Now, to me, and this is just my own. This is this is what I think. This is my own opinion. If you, if they're going to hide something, they're going to cremate. They're going to burn. They're going to dump you in the ocean. Mm -hmm. All right, that's them trying to cover their asses. I mean, just plain and simple. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like uh, Saddam Hussein, JFK, you cannot dispute that those deaths happen. Right. Uh, the others on the list, and I put Nikola Tesla on that list, You kind of, I can dispute that that happened because there was no photographs taken. Right. Uh, they did make a death mask, and then they immediately cremated the body. Cremated his body, yeah. And shipped it off. And there's a headstone in New York State that has his name on it, but there's nothing in the ground. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you make you do make a good point. And, yeah, to touch on what you were saying, yeah, it, there is no physical evidence no. of a death, of, a death occurring. Now, that's not saying that it didn't, but that's also saying that there is no evidence. Right. There is no evidence that it happened, just like with Osama. Even though our government says that it did, it did, in fact, happen. There were positive IDs, all of this. There were no, the the American public, the world public, no. did not see proof that, no. that that individual was killed. No. Um, so, yeah, now, I, I kind of see what if, you're saying. If you have looked for somebody for as long as him, for mm -hmm. instance, wouldn't you show the American people proof? This is the guy that orchestrated 9-11, and here's your proof that he's dead. I would think so, yeah. And, and you know, someone who massacred 3,000 people or, well, I guess it's more than that yeah. if you, you can yeah. count the war, the, yeah. you know. Um, and at that point, it's worldwide. It's not because the United States was not the only people in, right. in the world. You know, but you're not going to just, oh, it's him. We shot him. We threw his body in the ocean. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, I just don't buy that. It's some, someone responsible for that many deaths, you figure, would have a very public trial mm -hmm. and a very public possible excuse yeah definitely 
Not not saying that we should have public executions. I'm saying right. for something like that. Now, you, you know, figure. I don't know if Nikola Tesla died when they say he died. Right. Uh, I do find it strange the way that they handled his death. I find it strange just a few years after getting the trunks back and there was one, other trunks missing, and his nephew made a stink about that and made a big scene about that. Mm-hmm. I find the big question mark there that he died. That is very strange. Do you know how old he was when he died? Uh, he was... Uh, I'm thinking he might have been in his late 50s, early 60s. So it probably wasn't, it probably no, wasn't just no, old age. because Tesla was 86 when he passed, or right. supposedly passed away. I well, actually think he lived a little bit longer. Uh, and, and he wouldn't have even, quote-unquote, died then had he not been hit by a car. Right. You know, which is... If that happened. Right. Uh, you know, he was in, he was had an arrangement made out to sell his death ray to the Russians. He offered it to the United States government first. They turned it down. Supposedly, they turned it down. Uh, so he was making waves. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was definitely making waves. Now, you can go in and take your stuff and look at it in three days and say, no, there's nothing here. But then, years later, you come back and you invent something that he'd already invented by accident in 1894. Mm-hmm. You know, I think John Trump got credit for quite a few of his inventions. I think he did, too. And... I think I think you're right with Musk and Trump button heads. It would make a lot of sense if Musk was a clone um, who maybe remembered some of his past right. life. Now, something else I find familiar about this story. The name of the author was what was his name? Uh, Ingersoll Lockwood. Ingersoll Lockwood. You cannot find a lot about him. Mm-mm. Okay, there is a similar picture of Donald Trump. And the only picture on the uh, Inger Hard, what was it? Ingersoll Lockwood. Yes. His picture on Wikipedia, there's a similarity between him and Donald Trump. Okay. Now, we know that the author was married and that he uh, got divorced and it said that he lived by himself in uh, seclusion once he was retired later on in his life. Um, There's not a lot that you can find out about him, period. It's supposed to be a lawyer in New York City at yes. the time. You would figure there's a lot. Now, all right, it's funny that you bring that up. The same time period that he was in New York City, Nikola Tesla was also in in that in New York City mm-hmm. and during that time period. Now, Nikola Tesla went to a lot of parties and fancy balls and banquets. You can't, I mean, I'm sure that the, that the two back in that time crossed paths. Absolutely. Okay. Now... Uh, the uh, Leif Pence character from the Baron Trump book, mm-hmm. that is 100% legit. That was somebody, you know, back in the eight, in the, in the 1850s, 60s, or 80s that was a congressman. I mean, how uh, how wild is that? That's, that's very wild. It's now, crazy. you know, I'm under the impression, all right, because you, I mean, and it don't say how the author died. I think he could have been a time traveler as well. It's very possible. Um uh, and I, you know, there's just this is a really, a fascinating, interesting story for you to sit down and, and do a lot of research on. And you know, I'm still doing quite a bit of research right. on it. And if you want to, we can revisit this. Oh at yeah, some definitely. Point. I would, I would definitely like to. You know, if more stuff comes to light, I would like to revisit this. Because I, I still have two packets of information here that we can go over at some point. Right. But there was one thing that I wanted to sh- share with you. Okay. Um, and this was. Um, let me find it here. But essentially, it was uh, a Baron Trump reference to uh, our current um, climate. Pres- well, our, pre- our yeah. current president. Right. Uh, supposedly, in um, an interview uh, back in the 80s, um, or not, not an interview, but supposedly Donald Trump had um, called in to uh, Forbes or something uh-huh. like that under the pseudo name. Do you know what his pseudo name was? What? Uh, John Barron. Really? Yes. And well, then that was before Barron Trump was born. Yes. Wow. So the name Barron is repeatedly used by this family and always seems to be connected. The Trumps and the, and the Teslas and the Musks of the world are always, are always connected. Always seem to be connected. Yes. Now, you know, the author, you know, I just find it odd that you've got somebody that's a uh, successful uh, attorney. Mm-hmm. Uh, he starts writing books. He, he becomes a success at that. 
and there's not anything else really written about him. Exactly. You know? he, he's a he's a lawyer in New York, one of the largest cities in the world. Yeah, and a very growing and bustling town during that time. There's nothing about it. Now, granted, if there are, say, 10,000 lawyers in New York City, not all of them are going to be great. Maybe he wasn't a good lawyer. But he was a good author. He was a good author. Because his book sold. So you would think there would be something. And then all of a sudden, after what the third book, they just stop. And I don't, I don't, I uh, think I live right somewhere. He might have died somewhere in the 1930s, late 20s, early 30s. Do you remember reading that? I couldn't even find out when he died. Really? Yeah. Let's so see, here, I'm gonna have to go back and check. Here's the thing, like, um, so when I was researching, they were calling his books uh, prophecies, almost like a Nostradamus type. Right. And they they say that his 1900 book or the last, last president, president uh, was depicting the downfall of America, and Donald Trump would be the last president of the U.S. Which, if that's the case, this doomsday scenario. That would make sense as to why there's so many similarities right. if he were, you know, predicting right. the future. Right. Well, Ned, what do you think about all that we found out and researched? It's interesting. There's... What's your favorite part, Ned? Mm-hmm. Ned, let's think probably, about that. Probably the clone. You know, it, is, it is pretty wild, isn't that's it? A, that's my favorite rabbit hole. I think that's very possible. It's, you know? Yeah. I mean, because when I read where he was born at, you know, when you read South South Africa, you're not going to picture that as a place that has right. any genetic laboratories. I mean, that's just me. But then, you know, because I, I was getting these facts, and I thought, hmm, genetic laboratories. Let's see if there's any, if there's one. And then it came back with five. There was, you know... Well, five and, of the top five in the world are in South Africa. And that's what I was saying. That's, what I, that's where I kind of, that's where it's kind of starting to sell me a little bit, is the place that he's born is literally down the street from right. where it's possible a right. clone could be born. You know, now some of the things, too, that one of them specialized in, you know, was uh, gene uh, manipulation, where you could, let's say, if parents wanted to create a specific child mm-hmm. and they got enough money, they could have him be a certain height. They could, you know, have him be great at sports. They, you know, there's a lot of scientific stuff. Don't ask me to explain it because I don't know how it works. Right. But one of those could do all that. Now, people, you know, uh, Nikola Tesla, you know, didn't party and like to get out and was never married, you know, like Elon Musk has been. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that it's not him because they could have took or added that gene out. You know, Nikola Tesla, you know, had some mental problems early in life that he conquered and overcame by himself. They could have took that out, Mm -hmm. you know. Yes, he had really bad OCD. You know, and as me me and you and Nez talked off the show, when Nikola Tesla would have an idea, he would explain it like it was just this white, white flash, and then, you know, he would have an idea for something. What if? <laughs> okay. Bear with me. Okay. What if Tesla is the clone of Musk? Because Musk explored space and time traveled back. That's that's very possible. Mind blown. Ned, what do you think? This is a year worth of content. Right? Absolutely. We need to. Yeah. You know, uh, is... We would definitely revisit this story. Uh, and, you know, I want to find out what else happened to that author, you know, and the point you just brought up, that's that's brilliant. I can't believe you thought of that all by yourself. I, it really hurt. You know. Look, there's tears in my eyes. It hurt bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, there is a lot of content that, that we can – that we can keep on talking about. You know, this is a fascinating subject. It, it really is, and I think that um, you know, like like I said, I, th- I think we should, I think we can keep doing research, and then ever so often drop a little tip right. here and there for our listeners. Right. You know, and that 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 sounds that sounds great to me. Uh, you know, uh, I have really enjoyed this segment. I hope you guys have too. Absolutely. This next segment was taken from episode nineteen which premiered March 7th, 
2021. We are joined in the bunker today by the one and only Elliot from Elliot's Articles. Welcome aboard, Elliot. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Elliot from Elliot's Articles. Well, he just does that so smooth. Yes, yes, he it's, does. It's awesome to see it in person. Yeah, it, 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 I have no life outside of this. <laughs> this is all I can do. It does. Uh, Makes me feel not professional doing this now after seeing him working. Here. Well, like I said before, I am a damn hick. I don't know why you people so, let me talk. Yeah, and then he's I, he's over here like you all heard my voice. I've heard my voice. <laughs> I understand why people turn it off to him. My my section no. shouldn't be called Elliot's articles. It should be I need to go use the bathroom and this no. is the perfect time to do it. <laughs> that's what uh Cronkite hey, that's a good name for your Cronkite's Cardicle, Chronicles. Cardicles. Uh Cardicles on the uh, midweek show. What is it? The Cronkite I need to go use the bathroom segment. Why? So that way people can go use the bathroom and let it play. Why don't you just say now's a good time to go to the bathroom? That's he does. It says up next, Elliot's Articles. That's <laughs> what it means. Uh, we also have Ned join us in the studio. Yellow. For our first ever <laughs> round table. Wait, what's our next one? What's what are you, Nikola Tesla. Okay, well, no, not yet then. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to start. <laughs> okay. Uh, Nikola Tesla was born July 10th, 1856, and passed away January 7th, 1943. He was an inventor, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, uh, futurist, best known for his uh, contributions to the design of the modern alternating current, the AC uh, electrical system. He had many, many, many inventions that we have benefited from and are still benefiting benefiting from today now we've had and you know elliot's with us i'm glad elliot's in the studio because we had a two-part before when we talked about nikola tesla yeah there's so many avenues and ways it could go well and you and i talked a little bit this week and there's a bombshell yeah yeah and and i I will wait till we get on up to that part before i mention that but there is some new information that was posted that uh, we didn't have when we talked about last time. Mm-hmm. And I find this fascinating. And his, It seals the deal. Yeah. 100% <laughs> well, seals the deal. It, it makes you lean towards more time travel stuff. Yes. Uh, so uh, where do you guys want to start talking about Nikolai? We can, well, we if, can start if, anywhere. If you, want to start, if you want to talk about Nikolai, I will talk about the, uh, the other two. Okay. You'll talk about... Uh, Trump and Musk. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, it, it, it is kind of strange that like, even on when I talked about Montauk Project, on the, you know, he was a big part of the Montauk Project. Yes, he was. He was, he was involved in a little bit of everything, I think. He definitely, definitely was. Um, he Some of his inventions were the AC motor, the carbon button lamp, the death ray, that was uh, supposedly was his last uh, invention that caused him conflict with the U.S. government. Uh, the uh, plasma globe, plasma lamp, the radio control, uh, teleforce, teleoperation, Tesla coil, Tesla experimental station, uh, Tesla turbine, <clears throat> the vacuum variable uh, capacitor, the violet ray. I mean, it goes on and on and on. World wide, world wireless system, wireless power transfer. I mean, the man was a genius. You know, well, and he also didn't he also the, the rumor is in the in the lost works of Nikola Tesla there was a time travel machine, the time machine. Yeah, that's what people have uh, alleged. There's no documentation. Well, sure. To prove that but there is some certain similarities and cases that will make you think that there yes were, that is that is 100 percent true there were two crates of files we're missing yeah well no there were more than two um i can't remember exactly how many but all of there was wasn't there like 20 some that went missing oh yeah no no that is right because it was like there was 80 crates yeah and there was only like 60, 60 returned yeah, okay, yeah yeah there's so factor that by 10 so there were yeah. 20 crates okay um, so immediately following Nikola Tesla's death, the government swoops in to acquire his papers. The FBI instructed the Office of Alien Property to immediately take possession of all uh, his remains, of all that remained of his property and possessions. Now, okay, first, the Office of Alien Property, doesn't that office doesn't exist anymore. 
you have a guy that was born overseas but came here early in life and was an American citizen. Mm -hmm. Why would the Office of Alien Property first come in and take his stuff? <clears throat> That's a good question. Is it, you know, is it alien that, you know, person who moved here from another country or is it alien? Well, because I mean, the, the, it, it may have started out as person who moved here from another country, but I mean, Tesla may just not be, you know, right from the neighborhood. After all. Well, yeah. well, the way the office of alien property was described when it did exist, and I'm going off me briefly reading over it, it was uh, an office that basically, if there was any threats to the United States, this office came in and took possession of that technology or information, or whatever the case may be. Uh, but uh, when they did uh, go into his room, they had a doctor, John G. Trump, look through his stuff. No, that's interesting. Who is John G. Trump now, to, to that, Donald Trump? That is his uncle. Oh. So, okay. Very after, interesting, sir. After, interesting indeed. After going... <laughs> I like that. Well, like it's my that. British accent. It's what, it's what I ordered Taco Bell with. We got 58 tacos, and I ate the absolute. I have never talked to a British woman in person before. <laughs> and I will tell you, that is very, very, very hot. Oh. You, sir, you, you need to watch your manners around me. But uh, after... My name is Goose. <laughs> this is my Goose impression on the, mod, on the English accent channel. Here to two bubble gum years. Right, right, cheerio, hip, hip, and jolly, and whatnots. Oh, I am glad to see that the coffee is keeping in. So, but uh, what I was saying is after, after uh, John G. Trump came in and looked over Nikola Tesla's files, his papers, his articles, his possessions, he said there was nothing of interest. Yeah, which is which is totally inter that, that's mind blowing uh -huh. because, like you like like we talked about, there's yes. twenty crates missing. Yes, and this man, who who has an who has a background in engineering electrical I think he's electrical engineering, yes, um, goes in <laughs> to see if there's anything of interest, and he's like, I don't know, there's nothing here. Meanwhile, he's okay. probably stuffing it. In his now, shirt pocket. And, and, and I definitely think that's what happened because we talked about that before because I think in the late 1890s, early 1900s, Nikola Tesla accidentally invented the X-ray. Now, if you read and do research on Donald G. Trump, he is credited with modern-day X-ray equipment. Right. So there's number one, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. There was recently declassified documents that reveal... That the FBI at the time were concerned over Nikolai's uh, supposed death ray and his trying to sell that to another com another country. Why would anyone be concerned over something called a death ray? <laughs> I have no clue. That, that is a no very, sense. very, very good point. Well, now, also, Nikola Tesla's, um, was it nephew? Yes. Was the ambassador, was the U.S. ambassador to Hungary. Yes. So, yeah, okay, I, I can kind of see the, the correlation as far as why they would think that an, a foreign power would be interested in his works, keeping it in the family, right. so to speak. Right. You know. Now, and, uh, you know, when his nephew fought to get his stuff back, that's when there were 20 trunks missing. Now, there was a bunch, let's uh, see, there was 80 trunks that had all of his papers and effects, but only 60 arrived in Belgrade. Uh, whether the U.S. government had some of the information and effects is still not known to this day. But it's interesting that when there was documents released uh, in 2016 over Nikola Tesla, there was still a bunch missing that was not that was supposed missing. Uh, those uh, were not released. It's also believed that Ronald Reagan's Star Wars strategic defense program in the 1980s was inspired by the Nis by the Tesla death ray. This article goes on to claim that the government is still using Tesla's material for research and development to this day. Hmm. I could see that, yeah. You know, something just occurred to me. We were talking about, in one of our other segments, Ronald Reagan mm -hmm. and all of the stuff that came out in the 80s. Why would we need... I know we said that Star Wars was to you know, shoot down right. nuclear weapons, but space laser. 
What does what does he know that we don't know? Well, that's a good point. You know, Ronald Reagan had an obsession with uh, UFOs. Yeah. And uh, he had experiences where, you know, he saw UFOs. Possibly him and his wife, Nancy, was abducted mm-hmm. uh, in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, you know, I mean, just him writing in his diary in, you know, the mid-80s that our government had the capacity to seat 300 people on a spaceship. You know, that was, that's, what, uh, what 37 years ago. Mm-hmm. Why would... I mean, just imagine the technology since then. I mean, yeah, if, exactly. if, if they had that in 1985, they may have a ship now that could seat 3,000 people. Sure. You know, and it, and it just makes you think, you know, why would the government spend and waste money on that? Why would billionaires like Elon Musk, Robert Bigelow, spend money on space technology if something is not there? The future of the human race is not Earth. That That's a given. It's it is into the cosmos. If we want to survive as a race, we have to leave this planet, or at least branch out. Some of us go away because the planet is not going to survive forever. We know that. That's that's just that's just the way the world. That's just the way the universe works. Planets come, they're destroyed. That's it. So we hope everybody out there is having a great day. <laughs> Not to bring anyone down today or yeah. not. Yeah, that was definitely a downer. Well, that's when the coffee's kicking out and I'm uh, crashing hard. <laughs> uh, well, you're going to talk about Donald G. Trump. <coughs> no, I'm sorry, John G. Trump. No, I'm talking about Donald Trump. Okay, go ahead. Well, all right, so we're, we're talking about the, uh, what really what I've got is the the conspiracy that surrounds Trump and, and Elon Musk. Mm-hmm. So yeah, are you ready for that right now? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Elliot, jump in, Ned, jump in. So there is a uh, a time travel theory about Donald Trump. The the U.S. president's time traveling theory links back to a couple of science fiction books written by Lockwood Ingersoll in the in the eighteen nineties. The books were called Travels and Adventures of Little Baron Trump and His Wonderful Dog Bulger. 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 Uh, Baron Trump's marvelous underground journey and the last president. Now, if you are familiar with our forty fifth president, you know that he has a son named Baron Trump. If you look at a drawing from the 1890s and this kid's face, it is, they look just enough alike to, mm-hmm. to kind of say, eh, maybe. Uh, <clears throat> some readers claim that the books have storylines and characters which link back to the U.S. president. For example, the main character in the novels uh, has the same name as Donald Trump's son. Uh, the character sets out on a journey and heads to Russia. Then Lockwood's third book, The Last President, uh, there is a storyline where the people in, the New York, in New York City are opposing the election of a new candidate, and in early uh, in, in early November, Donald Trump won the presidential election on November eighth in two thousand sixteen. And of course, we all remember that the uh, opposition Clinton had already she had already had fireworks ready to go, and she was she was going to be the president. She she knew it. You know what I mean? Um, Plus, there's another creepy reference in the book which says the Fifth Avenue Hotel will be the first to feel the fury of the mob. The Trump Tower is located on Fifth Avenue in New York City. Uh, But also, in the last president, I think, I don't think it, maybe it was his vice president that was named Leif Pence? Yes, yes. Okay, so coincidence, obviously, right? A lot of coincidences. A lot of them. Now... Uh, do you have anything else there before I jump in? Not for Donald Trump, no. Okay. But. All right. The author that you've talked about, uh, Ingersoll Lockhart, he was born August the 2nd, 1841. Lockwood. Lockwood, sorry. And he passed away September 30th, 1918. Okay, he was a lawyer and a writer. Okay. Um, he was born in New York. Uh, he, There's not much about him after his midlife stuff, after him writing the books, so to speak. Right. Uh, he was married once, he got divorced. There's, there's not much about his personal life. Now, it did say <clears throat> that uh, when he was retired and stuff, he kept to himself in seclusion. Now, he wrote a quote um, at the age of 70 in which he said, and this was before he passed away, The end has almost come. I'm only waiting for the signal to push off and begin my voyage to the Isles of the Blessed in the West 
in the far western seas. I was troubled in my mind at first, for my little bark, uh, staunch though it may be, sat too deep in the water. It was overladen uh, and wouldn't be current and merchandise that wouldn't be sellable in the Isles of the Blessed. Overboard with now, now I have lightened ship, I feel better. All right, we get it, Ingersoll. You know how to use words. Okay. okay. <laughs> now, all right. That, after what I found out recently and reading that, makes me think that he could be a possible time traveler. Because I've recently <clears throat> discovered... Uh-oh. Here we go. That, uh, and this, when we talked about him last time, this information was not there. Uh, <clears throat> there is a company called Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated that is that uh, exists today and guess what they specialize in what cyber defense media group is what they say okay <laughs> now the history of their company their namesake Ingersoll Lockwood deliver futuristic and visionary content over a century ahead of his time this is their mission statement uh, he passed on great knowledge to Stephen G. Samuels, who shared the Great Awakening Plan, also known as the Plan for the New American Century, with our entire team, who continue to carry on this tradition today. Our mission is to build a brighter future for humanity, uh, for America. Okay, now... Uh, does, it, does it say when that, when that company was created? Uh, I didn't dig that far in it. I was kind of blown away by by, you know, just their mission statement. Right. What, you know, a cyber defense media group. Now, that could be anything. That could be, you know, you can take that and you can do anything with that. I mean, but they have government contracts. Mm -hmm. All right? Because cyber defense, they have government contracts. And uh, they're, you know, like I said, they're, our, our mission, they continue we leverage that our founder called Future Vision, and that's in quotation marks, where we deliver solutions based on trade secret, trade secret predictive intelligence. Uh, a, they also dabble in a, mixture, a mixture of futuristic inventions, artificial intelligence, and machine learning, hmm. all used for the good of humanity. Over a century ahead of its time. What do you, what do you guys think about that? I think that's possibly Lockwood was a time traveler and that he saw that the the new country that he's talking about the new America, America. Uh, was the beginning was was the beginning with Donald Trump well so Inger saw Lockwood had an uncle who was also a political writer a lawyer and a novelist his name was Ralph Inger saw Lockwood and he wrote a book called the insurgents mm. <laughs> Well, and all the all the civil unrest in the country today, you have to, I mean, it, it it's interesting, now, to say the least. You know, and we've talked about it, about Lockwood before. You can't find anything really about him after, you know, from his, I mean, it, it, it's just like he disappeared, you know, and he made that statement in his 70s. And now to find out there is a civil defense media group that shares his name, and I read their mission statement. Mm -hmm. What does that sound like to you it could possibly be? Exactly what what if Ingersoll like? Lockwood is a pseudonym for someone else? Yeah. You know, like say, who, John Trump? Like, say, Baron Trump. Hmm. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, he has his own company, and that company specializes, too, in stock market stuff, uh, future inventions, you know, and I just... I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, when I found that and I shared that with you the other day, I was blown away by that. I'm like, whoa. Seals the deal, 100%. You know. <laughs> 100%. Now, all right, how does how does Elon Musk come into this situation? So when we talk about Nikola Tesla, and really this is, I don't know, this was a theory that I came, cooked up a while back. But when we talked about uh, Nikola Tesla, one of the, they were talking about cloning. Right. Uh, and that they had taken some of his DNA. Um, keep on fighting. Now, and, and there's still, to go back to the previous time we talked about him, you know, his, his body was at, in, in New York one time, mm -hmm. you know, and then it was, and they did a death mask of him. Uh, 
I think it was maybe a gold death mask. Uh, and then it was cremated and shipped off to, to Belgrade to the Nikola Tesla Museum. Yep. You know, <clears throat> and that was several years later that, that that happened. Right. So when we talk about that, we talk about um, the cloning. Now, there are several cloning um, facilities, I suppose, in South Africa. Yes, there are. And this next gentleman I'm going to talk about was actually born in South Africa. Okay. Uh, Elon Reeve Musk, born June 28th, 1971. Uh, he was a industrial designer and engineer. He is a co-founder, CEO, CTO, and chief designer of SpaceX. Um, he was the uh, CEO and product architect of Tesla Incorporated. He founded the Boring Company and co-founded Neuralink, and co-founded uh, co-founder and initial chairman of OpenAI. Um, Musk is one of the richest people in the world. Uh, Musk was born in, uh, was born to a Canadian mother and a South African father, uh, and raised in Pretoria, South Africa. Uh, he briefly attended the University of Pretoria before moving to Canada. Uh, so essentially. It's possible that he was cloned and was born in South Africa. Now, you know, when, when, when you and Ned presented this to me, to me, you know, a few months ago, I kind of laughed. You did. Until I started doing research. And I found out, you know, that the top five, clone, not cloning, but labs mm-hmm. with DNA and stuff are in South Africa. And one of them... Is not too far from where yeah, Elon Pretoria. Musk was born in Pretoria, South Africa. So you know, I don't find that laughable. <clears throat> not know. at all. So the theory that I've kind of cooked up with here is Nikola Tesla is a clone, or no, I'm sorry, Elon Musk is a clone of Nikola Tesla, but he is actively securing more and more funds to f- reach further into space. Yes, he is. What if? Nikola Tesla, or what if Elon Musk is not the clone of Nikola Tesla? What if Nikola Tesla is the clone of Elon Musk? So you mean they time traveled back in the old days instead? I Elon. have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, I don't know. I see what you're saying, but wow, you know, it's a stretch. I mean, it, it is you know, a it is a stretch. And, I know, but. and 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 this is a big rabbit hole. But yeah. there's too many. You know, and I'm going to do some research on his uncle Ralph. You know, yeah, that's pretty neat. You know, uh, so that Ingersoll Lockwood, I looked up their company page, yes. and it mentions on their like company page, was he a time traveler, a mystery man, a futurist? Like, what was he? So why, if you're working with the government, and by the way, they're located on uh, Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington D.C. That's where they're. Uh, <laughs> They're they're located on 1717 Pennsylvania Avenue. That's uh, right next door to the White House. <laughs> in, in, in Washington D.C., their whole deal is, uh, if you're trying to be a real company that's doing all this stuff, why would you put mystery man, futurist, time traveler on your you know about right. us page? Yeah, exactly. Like you know, now they're I, hiding in plain sight at this point. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that is. Just, it is a conspiracy. That I mean. I get it. But. All right. I think Lockwood was a time traveler. I, I, you know, and people's going to laugh when they hear this episode. There's, there's too much evidence. There's too supporting too many that he was a time traveler. I'm, I'm, is, I'm, I'm not one. Well, and uh, he is wrapped up with the Trump family somehow. You know, and you have that on their website. I mean, he, he's wrapped up with the Trump family somehow, unless. I mean, but he'd have to be, he would have to know. Uh, he, yeah, he, he would have to be connected to the Trump family, correct. But he would have to know the, in order to write those books with this, as many similar characteristics as there were, he would have had to know what transpired here in the 21st century yeah. to write something that happened then in the 19th century. Yeah. That is, Seals the deal. You know, Seals the deal. Time travel. I mean, for you know, I mean, and honestly, you know, you can say, well, you all started out talking about Nikola Tesla. How'd you get on this? This is where it all started. Yeah. With his uncle, John Trump, finding They're, his papers and documents and all that. The rabbit holes go so deep with this one. It's crazy. But it didn't really turn out good for Trump, did it? I mean, when you think about that, and I'm not trying to get political, but right. I mean, well, like, uh, well, and then I'm not trying to dis- disprove right. your all stuff. I'm just saying, what if, if you are a time traveler and you have access to all of that, wouldn't you have saw what's happening coming? 
Maybe it was a different timeline. Maybe. Well, there is that. I mean, there is the whole uh, John Titor theory that, yeah. you know, once you go back in time, you create a divergent timeline right. to go but, forward. But you are also thinking about uh, when you talk about the, um, the, the, the book The Last President, when you have all of the civil unrest. And then you look at the... the What's going on now? Yeah, and then you talk about the, um, the fact that the Lockwood Company... Talking about the future, the hundred years in the in the future. The new great awakening. <clears throat> the new thought. great awakening. Yeah. Donald Trump could have very well been the last president to serve out his full term if everything goes, you know, tits up or whatever, you know. Right. What's your thoughts on all this, Ned? Especially hearing about the company with the guy's name, their mission statement, what they do. I'm, I'm with my heart. I mean, I'm <clears throat> Cronk guy. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> That You're with we with who? I'm Cron- with Cronk- 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 I, that's... <laughs> I mean, I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's yeah. I mean, I'm with Nick too. Uh, I think. Uh... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you just made it so hard to edit. So. All right. I mean, so. if you look at it, it's what they say. If a time traveler, I mean, it's you know, if you if you go into the future and you come back and. You can alter something. Something's going to change. It's like a what is it, butterfly effect? Butterfly effect, yeah. yeah. So what if when he time traveled, it was that was the name of those people in that book, and that's what happened. But when he came, when he came back and wrote the book, it just changed and altered the. It's very possible. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's. I, I, I the the one argument that people are going to make is well, Ingersoll Lockwood made this, wrote this book in the eighteen hundreds, and Donald Trump could have just saw it, named his child Baron. You know, but that doesn't account for everything. Like no. how how did how did he make sure he got the hotel on Fifth Avenue? How did he make sure that he won the presidency? How did he make sure that this this you know it all had? It is that's that's very that's a. What do you think about the company being named oh, after him? That, or that is a that is a rabbit hole I'm going to go down so. uh, very soon. Right <laughs> that's pretty neat. Yeah, that you know, and, and and like I said, I just found about that you know last week that wasn't available last time. When that we is doing research, and I'm sitting here trying to like look at their products and what they do, and like it's very, it's one of those like very vague. Yeah, you see, like your stuff is our stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. like, we, we take care of our own made Are in they, the USA, yeah. but it doesn't tell you what's made in, in the USA. USA. Like, we'll look on there and see if there is a careers page and see if they're hiring, and maybe one of us could go undercover. Yeah, yeah. you you going to drive up to Pennsylvania? No, I don't like Pennsylvania, so I can't. I can't I'm do that. Sure no, I'm, I'm sorry, not Pennsylvania, Washington, or DC. So I'm sure their AI been. is like listening right now. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I'm not gonna be able to get within a hundred foot of that place. So if any men in black show up, I'm sending them to Earl's house. <laughs> <laughs> What's it? So are they an investment group? They're, like it's very they're, like it's very. They're a part investment group, and then they let me dig back through my papers here. They do investment group, but then they also. Uh, help a futurist with their inventions. They also work with artificial intelligence and machine learning, all used for the good of humanity. So they do do investments, but they also help people patent stuff, uh, AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning. Now, what would classify as machine learning? What would that be? Software. Yeah. Well, what I think of when I read machine learning is the way all these school kids have been doing online stuff. Oh yeah. Machine learning, and then you go into the COVID. You know. You know. I mean, they they there's have, just so many avenues. They have an email address and a phone number. I wonder if they would do an interview. Well, well that's something we need to definitely try. You know, they have to have a PR department. We definitely need to try that. You guys want to be on a paranormal podcast? Uh, we did some research. <laughs> Radio you are, show. You guys are right in the middle of this uh, <laughs> Donald Trump time travel theory. Uh, it's, it's not a paranormal podcast as much as yeah. we teach people how to chew bubble gum yes. in the place they are. There That's you fact. go. Here That's a fact. to chew bubble gum. Uh, it also says on some of the papers that I got here, we unleash new technology safeguards unleash. to defend <laughs> humanity from Jeez. novel threats. It's the birds. <laughs> and to accelerate great My God, it's all coming together now. <laughs> oh, they, are the bir- they are the creators of the bird drones. Well, this podcast See, is off the rails now. <laughs> we market our own Just solutions. like Paintsville. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's off the rails, track. off the train. Yeah. Right. We market our own solutions first and our own open source intelligence media platforms. Wow. 
on a strategic mainstream media platform. <clears throat> And why would you like just randomly name your group that deals with all the kind of sa- the same technology that Nikola Tesla would be involved in? Exactly. After Ingersoll Lockwood, yeah, who wrote a book about the Trumps, who might have stolen all of Nikola Tesla's work. They're hiding in plain sight. It's right. the best because place. It seems, that's because the best it place seems to be. So weird. I think no one you're would, right. Yeah, like when you mention it, like the four of us are going to be laughed at, but we may be close. You know what I mean? Like and. They well, know that. Well, I mean, I'm used to getting like that. You see the way I look. You may be too close. <laughs> <laughs> Ned's got the. We were kind of laughing, but then we got scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just stared at stared at Ned's a sleeper. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. Watching you all. <laughs> Kill it with fire. <laughs> but, I mean, the, the whole thing's just fascinating, and it throws another layer on this discussion. And it seems like when we did this last time, you know, we threw layers on, like with the with the uh, Elon Musk being born. You know, with the with the DNA labs and all that genetic labs. That was like a big eggshell that we dropped. Now we dropped this one. So it's fascinating to think about when we talk about this again later. What's going to come about? What yeah. we could possibly find? But you know, Hopefully Donald Trump will, uh, will come on. Yeah, there's going to be some like Tesla helicopters landing next <clears throat> Sunday at Bunker Studios. You know, well, I mean, you know. <laughs> I definitely think this all started with Nikola Tesla. It's going to be several, several armed guards get out, and they're all, they're all Elon Musk. Are you good, Cronkite, Ned, and Elliot? Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Doodle. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is Doodle. That, that, that's some British lady. That's, that's flitter cake. <laughs> and I just start talking, and everybody goes to the bathroom. So we're good. It's good. We don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, all, all the armed guards get out. And they take their masks off, and they're all Elon Musk. Get in. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I mean, <coughs> at that point, I would probably go. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it's you know, and the truth is out there. Yes, I mean that's that's all I can say. Definitely. And there's so much, and and I can tell that Elliot's taken aback when I when I, I said I'm that. Sitting, you I'm know, trying my best to like so, put it all together in my brain, and it's like, just, it really is hurting. You know, I mean, but you have a company like he said that's. I mean, you know, INC, Incorporated, mm-hmm. you know, and it's right below the White House. Been incorporated since the late 1800s. So, really? It's, it looks like it, Had it been incorporated since the late 1800s? Well, it says that they, that, that Ingersoll Lockwood shared the knowledge of what mm-hmm. America would need for the new Great Awakening with Shaw Samuel, or Shane Samuels. Samuel, yeah. Yeah, and like, there is still a Samuels on the board, but if he, he to share it, it would have had to have been the late 1800s. There's still a Samuels There's on the board. There's still a Samuels on the board, according to this. Wow. Which Stephen is G. another. Samuels. So, yeah. I wonder if the Lockwood Lockwood Company is the, the the secret government, the one world government they keep talking about. <sighs> or not they, but everyone keeps talking about. Oh, and there's also, there's also a Gorman <clears throat> on the board of directors, which takes us back to that Gorman dogfight we talked about. Yeah. And, and he is a member of the U.S. Navy, retired. And the He's Navy pops chairman. up again. Wow. And there's a member of the U.S. Army retired. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security founding member is the same guy. Now, he come is, on. He's the chairman. Uh, then there's a Department of Defense consultant, an active Department of Defense consultant, a U.S. Army general retired, and a U.S. Army member retired. A... No, wh- why would a Department of Defense people be involved in a stock market company? Yeah, I'm not emailing them. Mm-mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's not do that. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I think you, I'm, I'm going to. I don't think you need to edit this whole thing out. <laughs> I mean, you know, wow, wow. What is a U.S. patriot? Yeah, I don't understand that one. Is that just is like? It? It's. It, it just says it. It has a name. I'm not going to mention the name right. because I enjoy living. Uh, <laughs> it's got a name, and it says U.S. Patriot Director. There's one, two, three, four, five, six directors, a vice chairman, and then a chairman. And the chairman is Stephen G. Samuels. We have stumbled onto something. Stephen G. Samuels is a chairman. Uh-huh. Do you want something? The lights are flicker. I wonder. No, they Do you want to hear helicopters? <laughs> no. I wonder if Stephen G. Stephen G. Samuels. Okay, this is weird. Okay, so it wasn't in the LA. Okay. This is on the Our History. It says, In the late 1800s, our namesake, Ingersoll Lockwood, delivered futuristic and visionary content over a century ahead of its time. 
he passed on this knowledge to Stephen G. Samuels. In 2016. Who shared, yeah, who shared the Great Awakening plan, also known as the plan for the new American century, with our entire team who continue to carry on this tradition today. Our mission is to build a brighter future for humanity, starting with the resurgence of American exceptionalism. What now, year? Stephen G. Samuels is still the name that is on the board. What year? And that's still it doesn't the one give that, us a in, year that Lockhart that, shared the information with. Steve, I bet it's 2015-2016. junior or anything? Or it, no, no, same. No, just Stephen G. Samuels. He was a member of the United States Department of Homeland Security founding member. Stephen G. <laughs> Samuels Stephen G. Was. Samuels was, and he's the chairman according to this. Well, we'll see y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have mass of your pen, please. <laughs> Future episodes, we're going to research Stephen G. Samuels. I, that's for those interested. My name is Eli, and I work at the XLR. <laughs> Please do that <laughs> <kill> me. <laughs> I have nothing to do with this group. I've been kidnapped. Send help. What is? Good. Well, what are the odds? I mean, I mm, I wonder if the company was founded right around the first election. I want to work that. Of Donald Trump. Uh, maybe it was. It was. Uh, That is that is unreal. You know, wow. A wise man once told me, I'm gonna put this out there. Uh huh. To keep a secret, you become part of the secret. Yes. Let us in on it. <laughs> Let me have a UFO. <laughs> we'll take it home. It just, just spinners just... on the side and <laughs> <laughs> So Stephen G. Samuels was a founding member and he's still the chairman. But Lockhart passed away in what, like nineteen eighteen? Yeah, before, yeah. And, wow, so Stephen G. Samuels would have to be, what, like 100? He's over 100. Over, so like 100, I mean, 22 years old? And that's if you talk to him as a baby on his deathbed. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, so, that's, geez. that's, so, I definitely think that we have definitely, the look, I, I've never seen the look from you before, Cronkite, in your eyes right now. This is, uh, th- this has definitely took a twist. Yeah, this is a lot of information to process. You know, have we stumbled onto something? I, I, I'm glad I, we didn't do this one first. <laughs> I definitely think we have stumbled onto something, and we will. This is something that we will continue on. This uh, is crazy. You know, hmm. Ned. I'm my Ned, on right now. What's your thoughts? Okay, <laughs> Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated was founded in 1981. Oh, okay. All right. Now, okay, if you go back to 1981, that is when they claim. A lot of people that time travel started with was the government's first uh, time travel project was 1981. That's true. There, there's a lot of conspiracy theories on that. Seals the deal. Seals the deal. <laughs> time travel possible. Know, you had uh, that's. I mean, I I don't know how many things I've read. It's like the government. Yeah, they did time travel 1981. They were they, they were doing experiments in 1980, you know, well, or uh, since the Philadelphia experiment, mm-hmm. but they actually had 100 percent success in 1981. I have read that on several several mm-hmm. websites. I mean, there's no doubt about time travel. I mean, this like this right here, this it. right here, what we've come up with today proves it. I mean, I mean it has to. I mean, that's a, I it, mean, it's a lot G. of coincidence Samuels, not to be true. There's. That's a lot of coincidence. All it takes is speed. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. My mind is kind of numb right now. Right? You know. I, I'm really hoping that this is somebody who's made up this company and is just doing this as a joke. Oh, God. I hope so, too, because yeah, it's really, scary. I'm mean, really hoping it is. That, that would be a lot of work, though. Well, yeah, but the alternative. Okay. All right. Let's uh, try that again real quick. Give me, give me their address again. Just call them. Right now on the show. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank, you for, thank you for calling in your son. Uh, hold on a second. I'll get it for Hopefully. you. He's going to give us the address it here. It is 1717. Wait, one second. 1717. Pennsylvania Avenue, Northwest, 10th floor of Suite 1025, Washington, D.C., 20006. Are you looking that up, Cronkite? I am. Okay. Good. Here's their phone number. I'm not calling it. <laughs> I thought about it. I had it. And I was like, Bucking no, number, call it. it. Oh, here. Let's see their phone number. Uh, this, is, this is... It is an office building. 
This makes great radio, too, by the this way. This is very good radio. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Street view. Here we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> We're on. Oh, it is an office yeah, now, So it is an office building? Mm-hmm. Tenth floor. Tenth floor. Suite 1025. Hmm. Uh, well, road trip anybody? Let's uh, t- t- turn it around. Let's see their number. Oh, he's doing it. Is that it at the bottom? Yeah, here. Okay. No. Are you calling? There it is. Yeah. We'll see. Yep. <clears throat> no, no. Where are you going, man? Ned's out. Wait. No, Ned, sit down there. Okay. Guys, we're all in it together now. So thank you for listening to here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Experiencing technical <laughs> difficulties. That's uh Turn the speakerphone on here. We are calling, what was the name of it? You have reached the voicemail of Cyber Defense Media Group. Please leave a message after the tone. Thank you for calling. Well, we have just learned that nobody has made that up. That is not funny. It would be hilarious if it was like, Goose, you reached <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Goose. Waiting. Thank you for calling. My goodness. All right, that guys. Honestly, wow. what I mean, do you think about that? Your, your face is red. Your face is red. You're white as a ghost. There's it? only so. There's only so many. My face is red because my <laughs> my blood pressure's up. Okay. There's only so many coincidences before it's not a coincidence anymore. That's the truth. So, I mean, I'm 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 speechless. I mean, honestly, I am. And it takes a lot to get me speechless. Listen to this. Ingersoll Lockwood was a was a passenger on a train coming from Ashland to Shelby. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> oh, oh, man. Well, we're, we're, we're definitely, I mean, this has been a great show. I have enjoyed this uh, tremendously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're on every no fly list, <laughs> everything. WXLR calls tomorrow goes no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, unless, but uh, unless you're playing Britney Spears, where you're not on the <laughs> uh, Do you guys have anything to say about this in closing? <laughs> Absolutely not. Do you think we should continue investigating this? I'm going to say no. Car- carefully. <laughs> carefully. I absolutely believe that Cronkite should continue investigating. <laughs> yeah, Cronkite. Cron- <laughs> <should, yeah. laughs> He's done so much work so far. Yeah, Cron- it's all him. Cronkite, does, Cronkite does, uh, enjoys listening. I think that Elliot guy should probably continue his thing. Uh, <laughs> it was Cronkite that called, by the way. <laughs> You know, I actually started to leave a voice, but I guarantee this is Crunk Cut. I guess you want to know if y'all want to buy some cookies. cookies. Well, you know, guys, we have to keep we have to keep investigating this. Uh, next week we're going to also. What's this? We you got a mouse on your pocket, brother? <laughs> you're 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 on the website. You're here to chew bubble gum. Explain something you know? to you. I'm on a podcast. So, I'm not an investigative journalist. Oh yes, yes, yes. You are my friend. No, I don't do news so, anymore. So you don't think we should? You think we should just leave it alone? We definitely stuck. I would like to know the story, but I'm afraid that we'll die in the process. No. A lot of people who said that they wouldn't die in the process died in the process. Yeah, but, you know, I mean. We're near the cave system. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> We're near the cave system. Uh, it will be a couple of weeks before we come back because next week we're going to have the part two to the round table mm-hmm. with uh, Elliot, Eli, myself, and Cronkite, mm-hmm. my good friend and co-host and co-conspirator of the who show. Who is involved <laughs> in this show in no way. Just, <laughs> just needs to be here for... for uh, Special announcement, it is no longer here to chew bubblegum. It's the Cronkite Show with his friends. <laughs> yes. And everyone else. Yes. yes, it is. <laughs> Welcome into the Cronkite Show. Take it away, Cronkite. I got to go. This will be our last show. <laughs> oh, well. This, I, I'm, I'm just going to lay it out. This, this is crazy. Like, I wasn't expecting to come into this. This is true, everything on the table. This is the one thing that, like, I like listening to you all talk about it, but I was like, no. Nah. Mm-hmm. This can't. This this isn't gonna happen. This this can't be real. After today, there's something to this. I yes, don't know exactly definitely. what it is, definitely. but there's something to it. Yeah, and and and, and I totally agree with. You. And, and you're lost for words. You yeah, don't want to say anything nothing. else. I've you no, have I'm, already incriminated yourself, my well, friend. No, I don't even know what else. Off. I don't even know what else to say. Yeah. This is. I'm the exact same way. Like, no. I'm not gonna. Like, I'm gonna be shocked if we like 
w- start watching something about Skinwalker, and like a guy pops up, and he's like, "Hey, I'm Ingersoll Lockwood. How are you doing? Like, this is my ranch." <laughs> you know, like, let me show you. Let me show you how to rustle up some grub. I got a cattle out here. <laughs> just finished mutilating. It's like I've, I've just I'm going to my summer home in Montauk. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, like it's so, crazy. I'm gonna take a train. But <laughs> this is our <laughs> first painful. our first round table. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, we're gonna close out. Do you have anything to say in closing? Uh, thanks for listening. And, <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun. It's been fun. <laughs> Remember us, please. Elliot. No, th- thanks everybody out there. Keep listening. Oh. Uh, email us. Let us know what you want to hear. Let us let us know what you want us to cover. Now you know people go right in. You need to keep pursuing the well. The I mean Ingersoll Lockhart Inc. Are you, are you dropping boxes? <laughs> to it looks it like an escape plan. I don't know what's going on. Plan B. Cronkite, do you have anything to say in closing? I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I want to thank um, our special guest, Elliot and Eli, for joining us in the studio for our first ever roundtable show. This segment was from episode 21. Your IP address is being tracked. No rights granted. We reserve all rights. And it's big and flashing now. Oh, really? Turn around here to see it. You can see it. So, it's flashing there. I want to hit show me and see what comes I, up. That's exactly what I just did. And it takes me to subscribe to learn the secrets that may help us all kill the virus. You need to subscribe to that. Zero dollar fee, free membership. will share you at least four critical documents. One, one sheet, double-sided document that while we can't st- say or promise the cure... To cure anything, it lists what we're doing to kill the virus and what we believe has worked for us. We'll share a more detailed slideshow. Uh-oh. Have you been blocked out? I think so. And Cronkite Investigates. Uh, again, going back to our first roundtable show, at the end of the show, we uncovered uh, Ingersoll Lockwood, for those of you who don't know, is the author that wrote the uh, Adventures of Baron Trump, and uh, there is a company currently in uh, Washington, D.C. that's just right down the street, I guess you could say throwing distance from the White House, called Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated. Now, we tried to call that uh, website uh, when we did our roundtable. We got a voicemail. Um, a few hours later, I messaged everybody that was involved in that segment of the roundtable, and the website was actually shut down at that time. Um, I guess, was it the next day that it came back up or later on that night that it, it was, came back uh, up? It was actually two days later. Two days later, the site came back up, and it had the warnings like the one I just read prior. Um, it had a warning like that. And um, I did call uh, Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated and left a message requesting an interview. Nobody's got back up with me. But something is really, I honestly think that we've really uncovered something there because no other podcast, no other show, no other radio show, no other YouTube channel, I don't think I've ever talked about a connection with Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated, uh, to the best of my knowledge. What do you think, Cronkite? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very strange. So, like, <clears throat> uh, so is this the phone number that you, that you called last oh, time? Let's see it there. Um, yes, yes, that okay. is it. Um, um, you know, next week I was planning, uh, I'll go ahead and make this uh, known now. Next week, I don't know what chapter we're in. We will have a chapter, uh, our, another chapter in the Truth is Out There series on, on the show next week. Why don't we make Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated one of our subjects okay. for next week? Okay, we can do that. And uh, in the meantime, me and you both will do research on that company, and we'll try to find out if there's a connection with Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated or Ingersoll Lockwood and anything that's UFO Area 51 related or Lockheed Martin. There definitely is. Does that sound uh, good to you? It says right here on their website. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> and research look who, look, done. Look who the picture is. Yes, that guy. yes, that's Ingersoll Lockwood. So we will talk about that more next week. When we do, the truth is out there. We're not going to be here next week. They're going to kill us before that. <laughs> no, 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 they're not. I wasn't on my phone looking at their website. Uh, well, they're going to kill me before that. <clears throat> no, you'll still be here. This is Cronkite here to chew bubblegum. We are back. That gentleman sitting across yes, from me are. is Goose. Yes, I am. And during the break, uh, Cronkite wants to call 
Ingersoll Lock Wood Incorporated. I do. And it's been a Sunday. I doubt them answering, but we'll, we'll leave try. Leave him a message. I'll you can leave him a message. I will. He is very intrigued by this. I have never seen anything take his, inf- take his attention like this. It's very exciting. All right. So we are. You have reached the voicemail of Cyber Defense Media Group. Please leave a message after the tone. Thank you for calling. Hello, this is Cronkite with Here to Chew Bubblegum. We are a podcast, and we would like to interview you uh, just regarding the uh, the possible connection of Ingersoll Lockwood uh, and the Baron Trump books and, and, you know, what you guys do. Uh, if you could, please give us a call back at uh, 606-373-3396. Or the number he called from. Or the number I called from, 606-422-4, excuse me, 424. Whoa, 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 whoa. you're giving your private number out on the show. I certainly am. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not do that. Just call him back from the number he called for. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good day. They're going to say, those guys are crazy. Those guys are stupid. Yes. Yes. Look who just showed up. Ned. Yay. Welcome, Ned. Guess who he just called? Who? Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated and left a message. And I almost gave him my real cell phone. He was giving his real personal cell phone out. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Stop, man. We're doing the show. You're about to give your real personal cell phone well and here here's why because uh we have been looking up their website and it's uh it's like um it 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 is more advanced than what it was a few weeks ago yeah we did get back on it it says uh your ip address is being tracked you have which which you said that before but it was talking about the only people could be there was fbi military u.s patriots but we are u.s yada 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 well i'll see y'all later ned we're glad to have you brother Man, I can't believe I was almost giving my phone number out. Yeah, over the I know. You're stupid. Airwaves. You're stupid. Well, they already have your number. No, no, no. I wasn't, I wasn't talking about them. I mean, I know they, they're already tracking my IP address. He, they know. He, 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 he gave them the show number, which was fine. Then he started, or you could call me back at 606, and started giving his number out. And it took me a minute to realize what he was doing, and I stopped him. I'm like, dude, we're actually recording a show right now. You're giving your personal number out. Listen, I'm... So... I'm very sorry. You know, I think I'm just going to go ahead and give your personal number out to the fans because Here's the thing. I mean, the, you you've already did it. I've been giving the whole number. Here's the thing: the uh, the fans would all be calling me, be like, "Cronkite, you stupid." <laughs> so, uh, if you do want to get in touch with Cronkite, he has a six zero six three seven three 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 nine six, or my email, Cronkite at here to chew bubble gum dot com, or Goose at here to chew bubble gum dot com. No, no, they're not trying to get a hold of you. They're trying okay. to get a hold of me. And the final segment. From episode 22, which premiered March 28th, 2021. Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated. And you're smiling from ear to ear. Why? Why are you smiling? (laughs) Did they call you back? They did not call me back. They did not call me back. Did you notice anybody following you in black vehicles this week? No. I mean, well, I really didn't pay attention. Okay. But, uh, I mean, I'm not really worried about it as Mm -hmm. much as probably I should be. But I'm not. Uh, The... uh, but I don't know. I just look. I just look forward to this segment all week. Me too. Me too. Um, you mentioned the email before we left about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll read that email again. It was from uh, Jesse from Virginia. Mm-hmm. So what's in Virginia? Washington. Uh, Washington. Right. You know. yeah. Hey, Goose Cronkite, Ned Nelly. I love the show, and I want to thank you for taking time to educate me on reports that I've never heard of. UFOs and ETs are real. We know what we know, and if people don't want to listen, they won't. That's the reason why uh, true believers need to stick together and fight for our family, the UFO family. I love you guys and don't want anything to happen to you guys. Roswell. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. Jesse's just sitting there right in the, oh, these four guys. I just don't get well, you know, murdered. <laughs> you know, reading that again as we're getting ready to stop this segment, and it's from Virginia. Um, I wonder if it's somebody on the inside. From Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated. It could, it could be. Did you get the Did you get the email that I got? This yes, week? from Terry. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I have not had time to dissect it. We've talked about it a little bit. Uh, I think there could be a hidden code in that in that email. Really, you think so? Yes. Why do you say with that? some of the wording, how their their spaces and some of the words, mm-hmm. uh, and I've not had time to dissect it, but I will before next week's show. Would you like me to read the email? Yes, please read the email. It says, uh, you are so close. Ingersoll Lockwood is only a symptom. 
The ink and black is still around. The form is different. Your discussion was close. What were the discs searching for? The train that the train interrupted. Something is loose in your part of the woods. Hellier was was home to some, but not all. They are watching. And like you said, the way that it's written, there 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 could be a code. Today. Yes, it is spaced out. So certain words are spaced. Yeah, uh, and, and, and not by space between words and words, but well, like spaces in in the center of the spelling. Well, take like the first three that are spaced out, right. and, and see if it is going to spell anything. You Ingersoll. Let's see you discussion. So no, I mean like the first letter that's spaced out. What's right. the first one that's spaced out? Why? Why? Yes, okay. the, the letter Y. Okay, and then what's the second one? Uh, it is, well, the next word is Ingersoll. Okay, but what's the next letter that's spaced out? Uh, N. Okay, so Y, N. Yes. What about the third one? E. Y, N, E. I don't really spell anything, does it? Y, N, E. fourth one is T. Y, N, E, T. Yeah, Maybe there you go, write those down. To yeah, yeah, it could be an abbreviation to something. See now he's clicking there. He's he's talking about how I was going to dissect it, and he's writing it down. Y n e t y w y net. Mm. Could be something. It could be something. That was a very good point, PB. That you said it could be like an initial for something. Have you found anything else? No, but just like I said, the. That's the only ones that the, the letters are spaced yeah. out, but like... Um, well, you know, and you could do it several different ways. When I get time this week, I'll try to go through and see if it deciphers into anything else. Uh, Y-N-E-T-Y-U. And that could be a website. It could. So, we'll have to check that out. But we are talking about Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated. Mm-hmm. Um so I went to their website again this week, and uh, I was uh, I took some notes and screenshots. Uh, when you first go to their website, there's still a warning that comes up that says, you know, it's for the FBI, CIA, uh, Department of Defense, U.S. Patriots, yada, yada, yada. You have to click and agree or just exit that out, and then you can view the website. <clears throat> when you get to the website, there is a... Strong caption that says, no, L.L. Linwood is not Ingersoll Lockwood, but we, and we is capitalized, support him, and you should too. Follow our donate buttons, and you'll be landing on L.L. Wood's campaign to save America. Please donate, uh, and then a button is on the website to donate. Now, do you know who L.L. Linwood is? That's what I was getting ready to ask. Okay, L.L. Linwood is Lucian Lincoln. He's also known as Lynn Wood Jr. He was born October 19, 1952. He's an American attorney and conspiracy theorist based in Atlanta, Georgia. He became known as a celebrity attorney specializing in uh, deflamination lawsuits. Did I say that right? Def- defamation. Defamation lawsuits. Sorry. Just defamation. Defamation lawsuits. Sorry. Got tongue tied. Woods first <clears throat> media attention in relation to his representation of Richard Jewell, the security guard falsely accused of the Centennial Olympic Park bombing in Atlanta in 1996. Now, what is what, what did he do with with Richard Jewell? He is his, he was his attorney. The defense attorney. No, he was he was hired by Richard Jewell to be his attorney. Yes, he was his defense attorney. <laughs> <laughs> so this goes back to the Atlanta Olympics bombing. Well, L. L. Lynn Wood does, but you know they make it clear on the Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated that they're not him. But they do support him, and they say we, and we's capitalized. And there's even a link to donate to Lynn Wood Jr. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. So. Well, the, in the Constitution, we is capitalized. We, the people. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, that would be interesting. Oh, wow. So, you know, um, let's see. I've got a little bit more here if you're interested. Absolutely. Uh, on L. 
Lynn Wood. After Joe Biden won the presidential election, Wood promoted conspiracy theories on Trump's behalf, claiming that Trump had won the election with 70% of the vote and that a secret uh, group of international communists, Chinese intelligence, and Republican officials had contrived to steal the election from Trump. Sometimes in association with Trump attorney Sidney Powell, Wood litigated on President Trump's behalf in many failed lawsuits, which sought to prevent the certification of legally cast ballots in the presidential election. Now, how does that tie in to Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated? It's simple. Ingersoll Lockwood is the guy that wrote the books, The Misadventures of Baron Trump. Yes. You've got L. Linwood that represented Trump. Mm-hmm. Now wh- that's how it's tied in. Now they are they are supporting his campaign for what? Uh, the Ingersoll Lockwood. Mm-hmm. They're supporting his campaign to save America. To presidency or no, no, just to save America. What does that mean? That means that you can press donate on the Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated, and it takes you to a site on PayPal where you can donate to Lynn Wood's campaign to save America. Mm. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I don't like that. (laughs) I need more information. (laughs) Okay. All right. In addition to representing Richard Jewell and Trump, I mean, but you see the connection between Mm, the attorney, uh, Ingersoll Lockwood, Mm -hmm. Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated, and Trump. You see the connection there. I do. Okay. In addition to representing Jewell and Trump, Wood has also represented the family of John Bonet Ramsey and former Representative Gary Condit. Uh, in his lawsuits. He is also hired by Republican political candidate Herman Cain. Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated, uh, well, this this goes on to say some other stuff, but that's the stuff on uh, L. Lynn Wood. So what I'm noticing from Lynn, well, uh, there's also another, there's also another um, connection that you're possibly not making. Is okay. That he is a lawyer. So Ingersoll Lockwood was also an attorney, a lawyer yes, as well. Yes, yes, and, and and I did not make that connection. What I'm getting from that is that he is a high-profile attorney. Attorney. So, wow. Okay. <laughs> Very interesting. You know, when I found out who he was, and when he first, when I first seen, you know, that he came to national attention as representing Richard Jewell, mm-hmm. and then when I read that he was Trump's attorney. One of Trump's attorney, I'm like, that's a connection. Absolutely. That's a connection to Ingersoll Lockwood, the Absolutely. author. Definitely. You know, because he mentions Trump, you know, in his in his novels that was wrote in the late 1890s. It's crazy. Well, you're, you're crazy. You're you're you're, 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 you're like a, a fat kid looking at a piece of cake right now. I am now. a fat kid. I went, there's a honey <laughs> bun over there. <laughs> um. Would you like me to kind of go with mine a little bit? Sure. So I didn't kind of go. Uh, I know you've got some more information oh, on, yes. the, on the people. Uh, uh, yeah, and and on the website, I have a little bit more information. Okay. Uh, so I kind of went uh, the opposite route, and I started researching the the actual building where Ingersoll Lockwood is housed out of, okay. uh, and as well as uh, Ingersoll Lockwood as far as what they've done. Uh, so. 1717 Pennsylvania Avenue is where they're mm-hmm. located. And that is a multi-story building. I think it was like 10 or 13 stories. The The building's website actually says that its building occupants include prestigious law firms, Fortune 500 government affair offices, wealth management firms, and government agencies. Now, when you go to the website of the businesses that are in this building... Uh, most of them are business management and consulting firms uh, for uh, foreign affairs and things like that. Correct. So it's very, very interesting. It kind of ties back into what we were discussing as far as uh, the mission statement of Ingersoll Lockwood, which was uh, something, I don't have it in front of me, but it's something along the lines of uh, the Great Awakening. Right. Was, was, that, was that correct? Yes. That, yes, that, that is correct. In um, April of 2020 oddly enough right around the same time that the uh the 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 ufo videos were released um ingersoll lockwood uh, 
has announced that the the acquisition of Cyber Defense Media Group, which will fold into its portfolio in the coming months. Uh, nothing, nothing is how CDMJ operates will change, with the exception of continued growth and additional focus on American exceptionalism. While we help spin out additional platforms for the global commerce or commercial and international sectors in the coming months, said James Gorman, vice chairman of Ingersoll Lockwood. Uh, this is an incredible time for us, and I'm especially excited to be able to help other divisions of Ingersoll Lockwood as they solve complex problems in different market sectors, including cybersecurity, healthcare, critical infrastructure, <clears throat> big data, AI, and space. Uh, this also gives me a chance to help cross pollinate activities and investments that we're doing in Stony Lonesome Group. Uh, where we focus exclusively in, in, on investing in U.S. military veteran-run startups, said Gary S. Uh, Mil- Milifsky, uh, chairman and CEO of Cyber Defense Media Group and publisher of Cyber Defense uh, Magazine. So what I'm noticing here is the major things that are happening right now in the world. Mm-hmm. Space travel. Yeah. Cybersecurity. Correct. AI. Um and of course, healthcare because we have a pandemic. And so they set up in that location last April, correct? Or that, that's when they became the Cyber Defense. Mm-hmm. Well, no, no. Uh, Cyber Defense Media Group existed before. Right. Ingersoll Lockwood absorbed them. Okay. Uh, and Cyber Defense Media Group's uh, on their website says uh, Global InfoSec Knowledge Platforms Awards Magazine, Radio, TV, and much more. So. They are a large, very large media group. Yes, they are. So we know that a lot of a lot of things are controlled through the media, through magazine, through uh, social media, which are on the internet. You know, uh, everything is on the internet. They now have the ability to control. Right. <clears throat> well, uh, that that is fascinating. I did not make that connection. Uh, the rabbit hole gets deeper. Indeed. Uh, also on their website, Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated, it says that HITS has a DUNS, a CAGE code, and a SADBU records that are on file with DOD.gov, that's Department of Defense.gov. Mm-hmm. Now, a DUNS number is a nine-digit number um, that is assigned to businesses in locations in the DMB database. Uh, They have a unique and separate and distinct operation for the purpose of identifying them. Okay. Uh, Certain U.S. numbers, agencies, requires that a vendor, if you deal with a U.S. government agency, you have to have a DUNS number. Okay. A CAGE code is the Commercial and Government Entity Code. It is a unique identifier assigned to suppliers to various government or defense agencies as well as government agencies between the various organizations. Um, Let's see. Within the U.S., any organization wishing to be a supplier with the Department of Defense is issued a CAGE code by the Defense Logistics Information System. Uh, This organization uh, serves the U.S. NCB. An entity issued a CAGE code must be reviewed every five years. So if you're going to work with the Department of Defense... Uh, you have to be issued those things. Now, a SADBU record, uh, when I Googled that, the first thing that came up was the Freedom of Information Act definitions and so forth. That stands for Small and Disadvantaged Businesses. Uh, you des- small and Disadvantaged Businesses Utilization, SADBU. That is an organization of small businesses owned by veterans or disabled veterans, or people, there you go, with government connections presently or in the past. Uh, do you have anything else to add before? That's I, crazy because I just I literally just said something about right. that. Um, investing in U.S. military-run startups, Lonesome, or Stony Lonesome Group. Yes. Okay. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, if 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 you do, please go ahead because. Well, no, no. The the, the only other thing that I that I kind of <clears throat> dove into is uh, we we never could find any information mm-hmm. on Ingersoll Lockwood, or right. we couldn't find very much. So I was able to uh, kind of find some information. 
uh, the, the author, not the right. Not gotcha. You know, anyway. So I mean, we can kind of go through that if you want to. Yeah, uh, yeah. So if anyone's not familiar with who he is, or you had more, didn't you? Um, I have more, but I can let you do that because you want me to go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> now, on the Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated site, it has a list of the board of directors. Mm-hmm. So I did some background on each of the listed board of directors. Mm-hmm. Ned's Ned's came in and he's shaking his head. No, he wants no part of it. Well, I could hear his phone over there dinging like crazy. <clears throat> he put it on silent. Stephen G. Samuels is the uh, United States uh, Department of Homeland Security founding member and chairman, and he also owns Stephen G. Samuels uh, LLC in Nevada, and it publishes the Cyber Defense Magazine. The uh, Cyber Defense Magazine mission statement is ethical, honest, passionate information security professionals for IT security professionals. Our mission is to share cutting edge knowledge, real world stories, and award on the best ideas, products, and services in the information technologies, technology industry. Now, you named off radio, TV, internet. Magazine. That, that's all. That's all information. Mm-hmm. Now, the Cyber Defense Magazine is currently still published, and it's owned by Stephen G. Samuels, LLC. Okay, the second guy, the vice chairman, is James Gordon. He's retired from the U.S. Navy. Um, he has a background in environmental science, teaching, slash testing, and program management. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the third guy on their website is Board of Directors is retired U.S. Army uh, James Hess. He's he, he is a director. Almost no digital trail. Couldn't find anything on him. Hmm. Nothing at all. Very interesting. Okay. So his name is James Hess? James Hess. James Henderson, Department of Defense Consultant, active. So he currently works at the Department of Defense, and he's also on the Ingersoll uh, Lockwood Incorporated board of directors um, he has management control systems he's a consultant with over 36 years of experience in projects business and system managements with government and industry specializing in earned value management system developed and uh, implementation Imp- yeah uh, recently retired from the department of defense so he's recently retired he, uh, he performs consulting services for industries in all phases of, manis- of management from January 2003 to June 2007. Guess where he worked at? Mm-hmm. NASA. Hmm. The Kennedy Space Center. Uh, he helped them promote and enhance discipline project management, contributing proactive to the realization, development, and implementation of NASA's uh, EVM policy and process including the process of evaluation leading to EVMS. We, uh, we get giggled about it. With the approval, oh, <laughs> PB farted again. I see. Uh, leading, leading with the appro- uh he was in a project at NASA where he also worked on uh, in their jet propulsion laboratory and helped develop it, helped uh, develop that. Now, January 2003 is about 18 months after Gary McKinnon hacked NASA computers. Okay. And they started building back up stronger, you know, ways to them not get hacked. Sure. He was there during that time. Plus, he also helped on the Jet Propulsion Laboratory Project. Uh, the other board of director is Timothy G. Golden. He is an Army veteran, retired police officer, and former prosecutor. He is an attorney and has sworn to protect and defend the Constitution as a soldier, a police officer, and now an attorney for those accused of a crime. Hmm. He's all on the board of directors. Now, this last one, I'm sorry, hit my microphone there. Ridiculous. Yeah, you've done it the whole show. (laughs) Now, this last one, uh, Paul Hemphill, U.S. Army retired. He's an active board member at Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated. This may not be him, uh, but uh, to get their background, I had to sign up for a LinkedIn account. 
because you know it's just getting further I mean, you know, and further into this <laughs> this was not available so I had to sign in and create a LinkedIn account so the, <laughs> but here <laughs> wait a second <laughs> so in order in order to get his background and more information uh, you gave them your background and your information no 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 I gave them here to chew bubble gum okay so terrific. you know should have gave him Ned's information. Uh, actually, <laughs> I think that the username I created was like Goose and Cronkite here to chew bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but there's it, it's it's a funny story. Why I was searching these guys, each one that I would search called you. No, oh. <laughs> it would have recommended searches, and they were in order about who I was going to search next. Really? On the LinkedIn side. Now, on this Paul one, Paul Hemphill, he's in the U.S. Army. He's uh, actively retired. He's on the board. There was only one there. And this may not be the right one because, you know, they said he was an author, a speaker, and a vet. Uh, and he does a lot of social and emotional growth uh, talks on students, teaching them the approach to American history. I think this is the right one. Because Ingram Saul Lockwood, you know, is is history. You learn about him from history. Not a whole lot, but, you know, what you can find, there's some there. Um, I'm sorry, he wasn't the last one. Al Fulcino is a U.S. Patriot. Uh, he was the last one. He, this is the one that may not be. Uh, it says he's a winemaker. And, uh, but it does say that one of his quotes was, Observing my grandfather, I learned that a man could take what seemed like nothing and make something wonderful. And uh, let's see. Oliver v- Valise Esquire is the director. He's on the board as well. He's the director and employee of the Cyber Defense Magazine. Hmm. Now, the uh, the U.S. Patriot is the only wild card there. Yeah. yeah. Because everyone else has a background in cybersecurity, yeah. DOD, Homeland Security, things of that nature. He's a winemaker. High-level clearance. He's yeah. a winemaker. Yeah, he would be the like your citizen. You know, if you're going to put a board together and you would have people, he would be your real-world guy. I got you. I guess, you know, your average Joe. Right. So. It's very strange. I wonder why they picked him. I don't know. I don't know. It, it could have been based on, you know, his – maybe they all wanted to get drunk and they wanted him to bring the wine. Possible. So, or maybe they just wanted something so far away from security. As them. As them. Um, it, it doesn't really – well, let's see. He was a winemaker, um, radio host a long time ago on a local radio station up north. He's the owner of a – okay. Here's the reason they would have picked him. He's a owner and landscape company, and he also owns uh, some oil franchises. Energy. There it is. That's okay. why they would have picked him. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, so, for anyone who doesn't know who the person Ingersoll Lockwood that we're talking about, we're going to kind of recap it. Okay. If you're okay with that. Oh, yeah. Totally, totally. Take it away. So, this is the information that I could find on, on Ingersoll Lockwood himself. Uh, so, Ingersoll Lockwood was born August 2nd. 1841, died September 30th, 1918. Uh, he was an American lawyer and writer. As a writer, he was particularly known for his Baron Trump children's novels. However, he wrote other children's novels as well as the dystopian novel 1900 or The Last President. Uh, he wrote a play, several nonfiction works, and he wrote some of the nonfiction under the pseudonym Erwin Longman. Uh, Lockwood was born in New York, uh, the son of Munson Ingersoll and Sarah Lewis. Uh, Lock, or Sarah Lewis Lockwood um, so Munson Lockwood like his two brothers Ralph and Albert was a lawyer and intimate friend of Henry Clay however Munson primarily achieved prominence during his military service and civic activism uh, he was the general in the New York State Militia and commandment of its 7th Brigade, brigade. Uh, he was a great admirer of the Hungarian statesman and freedom fighter Lejos uh, Kusuth, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, and I apologize. But if you notice, Hungaria appears again. Yeah, and that's Nikola Tesla connection. Mm-hmm. Um, so moving on, um, Lockwood had two brothers, Henry Clay Lockwood and Howard Lockwood. 
Uh, like his father and uncles, Ingersoll Lockwood trained as a lawyer. Although his first position was a diplomat, in 1862 he was appointed counsel to the ki uh, Kingdom of Hanover by Abraham Lincoln. Uh, at the time, he was the youngest member of the U.S. Uh, consular force and served in that post for four years. On his return, he established a legal practice in New York City with his older brother, Henry. Uh, by the 1880s, Lockwood had established a parallel career as a lecturer and writer in 84, or 1884. He married Winifred Wallace Tinker, um, and she was an aspiring artist, and they were divorced in 1892. That same year, he married, uh, the same year she married, oh my gosh, I thought yeah. he, he was married yeah. to her. No, uh, no, yeah, no. She, she married uh, some guy that was a lawyer by profession and uh, also uh, in, the, in the literary field. Right. Um, Lockwood spent his retirement years in Saratoga Springs, New York, where he published his last book and collection of poetry entitled In Varying Mood, or Jet Sam, Flot Sam, and Legan in 1912. It opens with a juxtaposed uh, photo uh, photographs of Lockwood at age 35 and at age 70. In the preface, in the preface he, said, he wrote, The end has almost come. I'm only waiting for the signal to push off and begin my voyage. Uh, to the Isle of Blessed in the Far West Seas. Uh, I was troubled in my mind at first, uh, for my little bark, staunch though it may be, sat too deep in the water. Uh, it was overladen with conceits uh, that wouldn't be current and merchandise that wouldn't be sellable in the Isle of Blessed. Overboard with it. Now that I have a lightened ship, I feel better. What, what do you think he's saying there? Because this was the <clears throat> last thing that he wrote before he, he he's, passed. He's getting ready to... Board the time ship and go to another time. You know, I've I've read that before on the show and pointed that out. I mean, you could translate that as him saying farewell to this time. He's going to another one. And everything he has in this time, he can't he can't use where he's going. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's very true. Very. I mean, very you know, interesting. the whole thing gets deeper and deeper. You know. And I'm sure we'll be doing some more research or something else will pop up. Definitely. About Ingersoll Lockwood or Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated. Definitely. The fact that Richard Jewell's attorney is connected to them. Isn't that That, that blew my mind. I've never, you know. Never in a million years would have thought that. You know, and he's also connected to Trump. So. Yeah. It's wild. You know. What was your thoughts on all of that, pretty boy? So, that's formal. PB. Yes. Yeah, all right. PB. I'm sorry, PB. So, with all you guys talking about this, I was just thinking about it. We all sound like Nicolas Cage trying to find out a mystery. <laughs> 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 and this is like the only thing that's going through my mind. Also, um, Ingl what's that guy's name? Ingersoll. Ingersoll, yeah. yeah. I keep saying Ingles. That's, that's <laughs> Spanish for English. Like the wrong nationality, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, their office, right, is 1717. Pennsylvania Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C., yeah. 2000, with three zeros, six. Mm -hmm. So I was just looking at 1717, or I was just looking at their location, and apparently uh, 1717 is actually an angel number, um, and it indicates that you have an important soul mission and life purpose that involves communicating, teaching, and healing others and serving humanity in a manner that suits your personality and natural abilities and interests. You know what's crazy is that's why that would explain why a lot of the businesses that are listed even say that they are working for Ingersoll Lockwood. So, like, as you guys were talking, I wasn't trying to, like, not pay attention. Right. I was just reading that, and I was like, that's crazy. That's, that's... And also, um, 1717, right? It's a, it's a Latin word meaning I have lived. And that goes with time travel. <laughs> that goes along with time travel. It, all right. If if this is not something that we're thinking it is, this is probably the greatest hoax of all time. This this is not <laughs> hoax, and all this stuff is not by chance. None of this is by chance. That's this amazing. is all connected. Like I never, I never, I didn't think to research the number. Yeah, the, the I biblical was number. I was like, that's it's crazy. 17, that's that's a good call. You know, the reason why I saw that is because I was looking up the location, and I got into this guy on on Twitter and he said bro 1717 and he just put out the the address so I kind of looked it up I was like what does 1717 mean and then it says it's an angel number you can even look it up Wow, that's fascinating and it even kind of says something about that in their mission statement it talks about uh, the great awakening yeah. and bettering humanity yeah. and things like that that's, yeah wow so 
Well, PB coming in strong with the mind <laughs> Good blow. job, brother. Good job. <laughs> nice work, dude. And uh, we are back. We hope you enjoyed that uh, very uh, confusing, conspiracy-filled so many questions left unanswered as to exactly Ingersoll Lockwood, Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated, uh, Trump, his uncle, Elon Musk, uh, Nikola Tesla. Still so many questions unanswered. Now, before we go, I think that Cronkite wants to try to call Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated one more time to see if we have any luck or if it's still going to the uh, standard voicemail that we've got in the past that you just heard on uh, on playback there of some of our Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated uh, specials. Not specials, this is the special, but on our segments that we've talked about in the past. Have you got the number there, Cronkite? I'm um, still looking for still it. Still looking for it. Still looking for it. Well, uh, well, we well. Uh, yep. All right. Dial it, my friend. Again, we're trying to call Ingersoll Lockwood Incorporated. You uh, have reached the voicemail of Cyber Defense Media Group. Still Please the same. Please leave a message after the tone. You only, well, never mind. <laughs> uh, uh, before we go, I want to say special thanks to Carlin for all the voiceover work, to CK Uncle Bill, ST3B, and the rest of the gang over at DeadPit.com, T-Shirt Joe at FastCustomShirts.com, uh, Talk Junkie, with our friend Justin and down on the holler with Jordan, Brad, and Jordan. Yes, very that, good podcast. Yes, yes, they are podcasts. That will do it for this week. Uh, we'll see you next week, and until then, so long for now. We'll see you. Thanks for listening to Here to Chew Bubblegum. Tune in next time as we dive deeper into things the government doesn't want us to know.